The following program deals with a controversial, controversial subject. The theories expressed are not the only possible interpretation. The viewer is invited to make a judgment based on all available information.
studio is this The top talents in the comic book business are here to tell everything they know. We are back for another Industry of Comics episode. Ladies and gentlemen, this one's going to be a fun one tonight. We got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. And of course, we're still waiting, perpetually waiting for our third co-host, um, who should be out there somewhere in the ether, figuring out a way to get on this show, hopefully. Jesse, how you doing, brother? I'm doing very, very good. Got my Iron Maiden shirt on. Just checking out... My Motley Crew, only 15 made. First promo tape in history. Only 15 of these made. Uh, Nikki Six owns one. There's one in the Music Hall of Fame. Found this in a bin of cassette tapes about three years ago. So very, very cool. Uh, so I thought I would share that out at the beginning of the show. Just some coolness there. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Is that, what is that? Is that my phone? Is that your phone? You hear something in the background? Uh, no, I just not my, my phone's off. So, what is that? There we go. I got it. Okay, it was it my phone called somebody and it was on. I could hear it in the background. I'm like, what yeah. the heck is going on there? Yeah. I, I'm the one that messes up the show this time. <laughs> so, all right. Um, we we had a, gr- a lot of people uh, reach out to us and say how much they loved the last episode. It was a lot of fun. Uh, if you guys didn't get a chance to see that, of course, go check it out. We had uh, Nick Berucci come on, talk about dy- uh, Dynamic Forces and Dynamite. And then we had uh, Emmett from uh, Haven for Heroes Comics come on to talk about all the news of the week. And it was a lot of fun breaking down the whole Mr. Pink saga and stuff like that. Um, we haven't heard much from that, but Jesse, I don't know if you saw this. A day, I think a day after we talked about Scout and Metropolis's issues, both those uh, proper or, or IP or both those companies put out a major newsletter or a news piece saying they're doing new things. Scouts combining with another group and they're doing all these fancy new things. And I think Vincent's doing some type of new book or something, uh, addictive or something. Both of those people uh, or groups are probably like just hating life going, you know, what's, we need something to help us. So I suggest you get yourself one of these and uh, pray to the gods. Give them a little, uh, a little bucket of chicken because the karma gods were not happy with them. Uh, you know, that news breaking two days before they got these great big announcements. Right. And, and I think uh, one of the things that you have to do, and I talked to both these guys before the show. I've known them for a long time. Uh, and just coming from corporate, what what you're trying to do is you have this mixed news as what you might say is bad news, right? Bad news. And you got this mixed news, but then you got some good news coming out and you, you technically have to use that good news to distract from the bad news. This is what's happened, but this is what we're doing, right? Yes. And you have that distraction point. Um, so I think at the end of the day, this has been the history of the comic book universe is bad news comes out. And the way the company reacts to the public is very important. Um, so I think they did some good moves. Uh, that was very important to the structure of their business going forward. And they'll address those bad news things when they have to. And yeah. I think that's the <coughs> best course to do it, right? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, there is some juju involved in there. And, uh, yeah, whatever it makes to – whatever you need to uh, take your company to the next level, then you just got to do it. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever works, baby. That's right. Yep. So tonight, you guys, we are going to have a wonderful conversation about the comic book, art book, I guess is the best way to talk about it. I'm sure we're going to talk about some AI uh, throughout the night, AI art. There's been lots of news on that end that we're probably going to get into. And we've got two guests that we're going to bring in, James from Mad Love Comics and Art and Sean from Comics Elite. What's up, guys? How you doing? What up? Doing well. Yourself? Good, good. So, you guys, two uh, 
people that we've had on Beyond Wednesdays before. If you guys haven't seen those episodes, go check them out. Uh, we glaze them up quite a bit in those episodes. We're going to glaze them up a little bit uh, at the beginning of this episode to talk about you know what they're doing. Of course, James over at uh, Mad Love Comics. Wait, what am I doing here? Uh, James over at Mad Love Comics and Art uh, is doing some great things. Let me share this here. We're going to let everybody into the matrix there we go and we're back all right james does some great things over at mad love comics and art we uh recently talked about um some of his projects when we brought him on specifically we've talked about in the past uh the flops comics stuff uh you got a new flops comics uh book out right now uh right there which is gorgeous and uh, excellent stuff. And of course, Sean, we've had on also, uh, f who runs not only Comics Elite, but uh, a Merck Publishing, right? Uh, he's got the big Merck behind him and, and the Merck on the shirt. Been doing some uh, really great things lately as well. Two uh, big people um, in the last year, year, maybe year and a half, for what is called the. Uh, um, Bad girl art? What did you call it, Jesse? You called it kind of uh, like... Well, you, we started off with bondage, and then bondage became strong woman. Uh, cheese, well, it, it went bondage, cheesecake, strong woman. Uh, yes. Bad girls kind of appeared in all three of those, but that's kind of the genre run that we've had. Uh, but nowadays, listen, like I said during the uh, before the show, we sell about three thousand books a week, and right now, strong women books are in the lead by far. It's not even close. What horror is? Uh, obviously, horror is second. Uh, horror is maybe twenty points behind bad girl stuff or strong yeah. women stuff, whatever you want to call it. Right. And and one of the things that I love about both companies is you guys put out quality product. Um, James, we kind of talked, we saw each other at Sworn Fest and we kind of talked about, uh, you know, printing and, and uh, the printer that you use. And then, of course, Sean, you have you just installed a massive monster printer in uh, your place that pumping out great books. What would, you, James, I'm going to ask you first, what do you call this style art? Do you have a name for it? Do you call it good girl art, bad girl art, pinup art? I've, I've always just called it art. Um, I like I, that. You know, pinup. Pinup is, I guess, a good word for it. Um, you know, for me, it's always just, I consider it just art. And whether it's in the form of like the flops cover, um, you know, drawn art, digital art, traditional art, I view cosplay as as art. Um, I even have someone working on a book that's going to be done in uh, toy photography. You know, so it's really just showcasing art. Um, yeah. How you want to classify it's kind of hard because I do have some releases that don't fit within the pinup category either. Yeah. Um, there's no topless or nude variants. It's just art, you know, yeah. for the yeah. sake of art. Yeah. Uh, Sean, do you have a, do you have a term for it that you use? Um, booby books. <laughs> booby books. I like that, man. Yeah. I like I mean, that. <laughs> you know, pretty girl books, pretty girl covers, you know, I mean, uh, pretty girl covers can encompass a lot of different things. I mean, you know, look at some of the top selling Marvel and DC covers of the week, and it's going to be a beautiful back, you know, Batgirl, Catwoman, Harley Quinn, Jean Grey, you know, you know, a Zerdy cover. Or somebody's doing uh, some of that. It, to, to know what sells, just look at what the exclusive guys are requesting. Look at the KRSs of the world and, and uh, you know, the unknowns and those guys, whatever they, they're going to request what sells for them. And it's... You know, I was kind of talk about <clears throat> the history of kind of, you know, comics. Jesse, remember this too. Everything comes in waves, right? For a while there, you couldn't give away a, a girly book. Everybody wanted Batman Who Laughs and Metal. And then there was a big shift into Venom. Everybody wanted Venom. It was all Venomverse and everything was Venomized. And then it was Carnage and Carnageized. And everything comes in waves. You know, yeah. and now it's just to the point to where everybody wants. The, the pinup stuff it's become so popular you know we've um we've when we do whenever i, I do the hot 10 show with uh ben stein one of the things that he always brings up is the fact that um pinup uh, good girl art books outsell all the other books every week 
It is it is constant high high dollar sales on variants, and both of you guys have books in those categories on a regular basis. Um, we see these you know hundred dollar plus sales on single books quite often coming from both of your camps, um, and it's very interesting to see the 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 creators like Dave Stevens, who has always been an artist's you know, favorite, you know, he was an artist artist, but now he's starting to get some love from the secondary market in ways that he, his books have never seen, you know, and it's, it's all, I think, kind of happening because of this new art style that's, that's kind of grown in the last maybe five years. There's this super realistic art style that you guys, um, kind of, uh, have on a lot of your books that has just taken over the comic scene uh, yeah. lately. It's very interesting. Why do you guys think that is? I, you know, I don't know. There's something about, um, I got a lot of theories on this stuff. Um, you know, it has something, there's a bigger societal thing at play here, you know, um, in my opinion, uh, every go on Instagram. Instagram is just pretty much depending who you follow. You follow certain girls, certain cosplayers. It's just a portal to go to their OF pages. Yes. And that's become more and more normalized. Mm -hmm. So the, some of the stigma behind some of this stuff, it's it's less and less. Yeah. Right? It's okay to admit that you like a pretty girl on the cover. Yep. It's okay to admit that you want to buy the variant with her top off. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame in that. You're not, you know, uh, uh, some people will say you're, a male misogynist pig or whatever, that's fine. Um, everyone has their opinions, but there's less stigma behind it. Um, and it's more and more popular. I think there's a bigger problems at play here. We're headed down a dangerous path. I'm sure we'll get to that pretty soon yeah. in some areas. Um, but uh, I, I just think it's people, pe people want what's visually appealing. Yep. You know, well, there's a reason, I, you know. I, I think the big thing is it's socially accepted, right? So, uh, I know when I first started doing exclusives back in the day, I was one of the first guys that primarily only did Aspen Lady Death exclusives. And that was a challenge. And as we got into our fifth or sixth year, we started to say, wow, someone who's buying a Batman book looks at that Lady Death exclusive and said, oh, I'll take that. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you can actually. And the great thing about this and uh, what Sean was saying, you don't even technically have to put a publisher's name on a cover to sell that cover. And that's when you get into this social awareness on the retail side where someone's just walking up and just grabbing it. Doesn't matter what number it is. Doesn't matter who the publisher is. They're just, wow, I got to have that cover. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's kind of the, you know, we, again, we're already starting to get into deeper territory with some of the stuff here because when you just said, hey, you don't even got to put the publisher's name on the cover, doesn't need a trade dress. Well, then why isn't everything just a virgin variant? Why, why even do a trade dress variant? You know, I know why. I know the answer why I do trade dress variants. Yeah. But why, why even bother? Why not just put, like DC went to that minimal trade dress a while back, right, um, as a way to really showcase the art a lot more. You know, um, and that yeah. was that was amazing. That was awesome. Hell yeah! You know, how many times have you seen a yeah. great cover ruined by a terrible trade dress on it? You just mentioned one the other day, Brian. Yeah. Um, like it happens <laughs> all the time, man. That's yeah. my favorite covers. Hey, Dennis, heads up, real quick. Your uh, your mic is coming from your computer, so it's going to pick up all that that noise. So just heads oh, up. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Hold no, on. you're all good. Um, so uh, I think that the worst thing that a comic uh can do is ruin the cover based on the design of the trade dress right because yep. yeah. not only are you ruining the cover you're ruining that artist's work in, in my opinion yeah. the best thing that a company can do is design a, a, a cover design with a trade dress that accentuates that artist's work that makes that artist's work better that it looks better with the trade dress and that it happens but rare very rarely and well, what, what is it stormbreakers or the Marvel book back in the day where mm -hmm. I think it was called, it just said Stormbreakers, Stormbreakers the cover, artist. Yeah. yeah. And just the artist name. And then the rest of the book, 95% of it was the artwork. And don't forget, those out also had, yeah. And don't forget, you got the back cover as well. So I'm not just saying get away with the 
publisher's name, you have avenues to do it. But I think when you look at selling from a retail side, uh, you do have a customer base that is, that's what they like. That's what they buy. Yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the, James, you, you, you bring it up. You already brought it up about how you look at this uh, in, in a different, kind of like a more ar- artistic way. Uh, you've always talked about that, that a lot of these covers have been um, just art to you. And do you, do you pay attention to, to other comics, com- uh, uh, cover designs? Um, do you try to uh, utilize the whole cover art? It's not, it's just not, can you explain your thought process on, on creating a cover? Um, so as far as my trade dress goes, I go very, very minimalistic. Um, usually it's just in text, um, the artist name, I name each release by the cover artist. Um, so that way when they get graded, their name is first and foremost, um, a little date underneath it. And then a little logo in the bottom left-hand corner. And then of course the numbering on the front, because for me, it is all about the art and there is some argument to be made just doing virgin covers but I'm not sure about Sean, but for me, it allows me the trade dress to do a slightly lower price point and also for brand recognition, which was really important starting up, um, you know, at the end of 22, that's kind of why I stayed with the, the trade dress. And I think because I've gone minimalistic, there's a lot of times where I will sell more of the trade dress than the virgin. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting. It depends on the art, but it does happen. Well, I also have, like I sell comic books, yeah there's a comic inside Mm -hmm. with a character that i want to promote and feature so i i put a trade dress on it because that's what it is it's that character yeah you know so to me that's important also to you know have i'm sure we'll get into this more later but you know that's important that that's a part of it you know and i i design i have a whole graphics team that does nothing but design. Sometimes we'll do a, let's take a power hour, for example, I'll do a typical color logo that matches the art. Sometimes we'll make a custom logo if it's, uh, you know, more of the cosplay world or something, um, try to make that match, but it has to complement the art a hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. That's, impo- that's so respect. important. Well, can we, can we bring that up right now though? Because Well, uh, we can, we can, but f- ladies and gentlemen, I'm just got to warn everybody. We have hit unfiltered time. Yo, is this dude? <laughs> One sec. The most valuable commodity I know of is information. Wouldn't you agree? And we have hit unfiltered time ladies and gentlemen if you're scared go to church if you're scared of the truth this is not the place to be and to all of our co-hosts tonight this is where we let it all out and we are going to talk about the art book tonight and that we ask uh our our new uh uh people on the show what we we always like to ask a question but we're going to ask two questions tonight i want to know uh Sean and James, we'll let Sean go first on this one. What is a comic book store? What is a comic book store? In your opinion. Well, in my opinion, uh, at the very basic, a comic book store should sell comic books. I mean, period. I don't care if they're, you don't have to sell new weekly books. You don't have to sell uh any specific thing you don't have to categorize it but it should be like a comic we can even take that one step further back what is a comic book right what is a comic book you can google it look it up it's you know a sequential story told with pictures basically that's my definition anyway right sequential story told with pictures and words that's the the comic art because you we talk about art uh comic art that's the, the means of telling a story with pictures sequentially, mm-hmm. it's an art form. James, you know, what, so. what, what in your opinion is a comic book store? I, I, I can go with Sean's definition is, is a store that sells comic books. Okay. What, James, in, what is a comic art book? Um, a comic art book? Well, I think you're trying to marry two different 
concepts into one. I want to know what, book? yeah, yeah, yeah. Because and the reason I'm yeah. asking this is because this is what we're going to get into, the, the notion of a comic art book. A comic art book can uh, be one of probably two things. One that's a uh, an art book uh, based upon um, the typical comic characters that have been in production um, that an artist or a publisher or these days retailers will put out. Um, that's centered around the universe that has been created by comic books. Okay. Right. It's probably uh, how I would define that. I like that. Sean, what about you? What is a comic art book? You know, it's, uh, I think it's more than, I'll tell you what it's not, in my opinion. It's not a book that has art of comic book characters. Unless there's certain wickets are hit. For example... Uh, go to any convention, go to Lunar, go anywhere. You can buy Marvel's Art of Scott Young. I actually sent you a picture of it in the chat. Um, I looked one up a little earlier. Mark Brooks has a art book, right? Traditionally, uh, Adi Granov, uh, he does a beautiful printed art book of his art. Uh, at every uh, San Diego and New York, he prints very limited amounts of them. They're fantastic. You can win a free sketch remark. Um, that's that's to me. That's an art book that has comic book art in it. Most times, uh, now Marvel is publishing this, right? Mm -hmm. So Marvel has paid for all this art from Scotty Young, and they're putting together uh, a book featuring the art of Scotty Young. It's so popular, they think they can sell it. Call it a cash grab, call it what you will. I hate that term, by the way, cash grab. We live in America. Everything is literally a cash grab in capitalism. Um, so to me, that's an art book. Uh, we did an art book. Merck Publishing, very beautiful, hardback. Haven't opened it yet. Not this one, anyway. Did a Kickstarter for it. Very beautiful art book. Hardcover, volume one, there's the risk A, there's the origins. So is this compilations of art already done in your books, or is this new art? art? Oh, that's the booby one, sorry. <laughs> Let me get yeah. one that doesn't have the It's okay. We are talking about art here tonight, so no. this is yes. all art. This is all, all of this is art that Merck Publishing has paid the artist for. We own the art, which when you buy the art with agreements comes with the right to do whatever you want with the art. You can put it on a t-shirt, coffee cups, posters, art books. This is our first art book we've done. We have so many covers, the pencils, the sheesh, there's, there's so much. It, it's an investment. I really think sometimes the value in a comic company, let's take Zenoscope, for example. They have some beautiful old school art from from Campbell, from Ebass, from uh, some of these amazing artists. And I think the comp the value of the company is not in the IPs they possess. It's in the art that they own. Um, so in my opinion, an art book is just that. In the industry, it's traditionally been um, a, a book of art, an art book. I mean, exactly what it says it is. So when you say well, when you put, actually, Sean, hold on a second. Let me try sure. to correct you with that. Oh, um, please, please do. I, I know the history on this fairly well. Okay. Uh, in the sixties, the entire what you would call an art book was called the fanzine. Um, they would get art from a book and they would cut it out, and, or they would, hey, send off a letter, send off a letter. Hey, kids, letters and stamps again. We're talking about uh, modern times. And say, hey, artist, could you do a sketch for my fanzine? And they would draw a sketch. And the impliedness was, and these fanzines were mostly free, if not just to cover the postage and handling or the printing of it. Uh, which I'm not saying anything with, with that. Then by the 70s, can you, there we go. And then by the 70s, the artists started getting wise to this. And people like Frazetta and Bernie Wrightson. They started making art for their own fanzines, um, and they would make portfolios. You know, that portfolio started a little earlier, but bear with me on this. By the 80s, the big boys started realizing 
oh, we can do this as well. We'll get our artists, house artists to, you know, each do a sketch and we can put it in a portfolio and then we can make an art book out of it. So, I mean, what you're doing is a new way of doing something old, but definitely not exactly the same. Well, here's why I bring these up. Because there has been recently in the comic community, the collecting community, the, the, I, the, tr the idea of an art book has, I feel like, changed. And I think that you guys are hitting on both uh, ideas. One is, is one that just has, um, you know, uh, different styles, uh, different types of art from an artist, from a single artist, whether it's a chat, uh, sketchbook, like, uh, like you said, uh, Sean, um, uh, the the uh, sketchbooks from Adam Hughes that he used to put out every year, little ash can size books. There were sketches that he would sell at his cons. Um, now they're doing it where Marvel and the publishers are getting involved. There's also where publishers are getting involved and they're reprinting original art from these these characters. I think th th that's one version of an art book. There's a new version of an art book uh, that has also popped up where and and I think it started to me it started with this and I don't think this is necessarily an art book and what I'm showing to everybody that's not able to see the screen is a do you poo shout out to Marat Michaels who uh has been just destroying comic book uh collectors uh mon mon wallets with these do you poo variants for so long but I think the difference, and you kind of brought this up, Sean, is that this has a comic in it, right? It's the same comic every time that this book is printed, but it is a sequential story, right? There's, yes. these, uh, there's these other art books that have popped up that people are kind of doing this weird thing where they're, where they're bringing them into the exclusive retailer variant game. And there's these artists out there that are creating, quote-unquote, uh, I don't think they're sketchbooks. I think they're more along the lines of a comic art book because they look like a comic. They got, you know what I mean? Like, they're doing a lot of homage variants of them. It's just this real weird thing that's happening that everybody is lumping together in a, into the term art book. And so what, what people used to do, if they wanted to sell that, it would be a print. Right. I want it's, to feature my art. I'm going to go to a convention. I'm going to make a print. If it's a fancy print, I'll do a foil print. I'll do a number print. I'll do a metal print. I'll do whatever you want to. So if you wanted to promote your art, you would put it on a print. And everybody knows. I think we got to clear something up before we keep going. Because we're going to get into this pretty soon. Um, a lot of us walk the line. There is a line when it comes to cosplay covers. Well, that's why I brought it up to get it into this. Yeah, so let's let's just be clear about that, right? And actually, let's be real clear. Our our buddies over at Zenoscope are the ones that made that line really fucking blurry. Yeah, so I sent you a, a, another one in the chat there, Brian. Uh, <clears throat> Zenoscope, in my opinion, they do a very good job of the cosplay cover, right? It's very clearly not... that's. That's dressed just like Jean Grey. It's very clearly not Jean Grey. She doesn't have red hair. She has dark hair for whatever character this is from Xenoscope. There's a big Z on her buckle. She doesn't have the pink power signature that would normally come with her. There's, a, there's enough significant differences to where you know what they're going for, but it's not that character. It's a character dressed as that character. Now, again... We all walk the line, and I will tell you this, I'll admit it straight off the bat, I am as guilty as the next guy of not going as far as I should with some cosplay covers. Now, I've since then, I've been making a huge swing, a huge shift. Everything changes once you own your own IP, yeah. right? Somebody asked in the chat or a little earlier, why don't anybody do a Lady Death cosplay? <laughs> because Brian Polito will absolutely destroy you. Yep. That's why. Go to the homepage of Mad Love Comics. And um, newest releases, Yona number two, that's just punchline. There's no cosplay element to it. That's just punchline. You scroll down through, that's just, that's Huntress. 
that's just that's just poison ivy. Mm-hmm. I mean, with the big beautiful booty, like mm-hmm. there's no cosplay to these whatsoever, mm-hmm. right? So somebody could think, looking at that cover, that's a punchline cover, that's a huntress cover, and this is where I feel like we're getting into very dangerous territory as we have to police our own, right? Um, you don't have to. You can do whatever you want. It's free country. But I believe there should be a little bit of policing your own, right? So if somebody wants to potentially do something that's going to ruin it for everybody else, right? For example, uh, this may be a terrible analogy. If I go 65 in a 55, I'm speeding. If somebody goes 180 in a 65, they're also speeding. We're both speeders. We're both guilty of speeding. Me telling that guy that goes 180, slow down, get off my lawn, right? Slow down, you hooligan. I'm speeding too. I'm a hypocrite. But there's a difference between going 180 and going 65 and a 55, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Well, you can't excuse the one because you broke the law less. I mean, that's kind of a really bad argument. No, you can't. you, You absolutely can't excuse one, if not the other, for sure. I'll tell you something. Once I've gotten a cease and desist letter. They are terrifying if they're done the right way. They are absolutely terrifying. They will ask you, how many of this did you sell? Not only how many did you sell, we don't trust you. We want the data from your website. They can subpoena that data from your website. They want the print order from the printer to how many were ordered. Um, You, they want to know how many you have left, how many have shipped and fulfilled. They can ask you for all the profits that you've made based on that character. And they can ask for damages based upon the image you portrayed of a character that could potentially hurt their image or future sales. So I assume you've never gotten one of these, James, because you're clearly are just right. There's there's no I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of wondering how we went from what is an art book to the nuances of copyright and because the, the conversation the evolved <laughs> conversation <Okay>. moved on <laughs> so so let me uh, then let me let's give james a chance to rebuttal on that sure, yeah, yeah i'm sorry yeah. i'm dominating the conversation yeah here, well, what, i mean what? i mean you know coming in and and for me i i can't disagree with what you're saying can't disagree we all tout the line you know and and whatever we feel comfortable in doing um but you know the pot calling the kettle black and then saying well i'm less black than you are is is kind of a weird argument to me Okay. Um, you know, so, you know, agree to disagree, you know, to, you know, if we both break the law, we both break the law. Right. So, but someone broke the law more, even though it was the same infraction, you're so, still both going to get a ticket. Uh, Brian, can you um, pull my website again real quick, Brian? What's that? Yeah. Pull up my website again real quick. Oh yeah. 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 I'll just kind of give you an example here of, of I've done it in the past. Yes. So you just go down to that, uh, pin me cover. I mean, that looks pretty much like, um, Ghost Rider. Well, that's Ghost, Ghost Rider. Rider. That's, that's I mean, a, that's official. like that's a pretty it's official. Look, official though. Yeah, he has a glove yeah, yeah. on, but I mean, so you're you're bringing up stuff for or, or that's an official model. Out. Are you talking that's, about this one? Official. Pin me, pin that me. One. I got you. Yeah, yeah. So you know that's that's looks like Harley Quinn and Batgirl. Mm-hmm. There's no bat symbols anywhere. There's no diamonds. She has a helmet on that looks like a bat helmet. There's no symbol symboling on there whatsoever except for some similarities and covers that kind of show so that's the direction i have been moving towards anybody that wants to do a power hour exclusive i tell them if you want to do a cosplay it has to be distinctly cosplay there are many many guys out there on whatnot that are just especially on whatnot that are just straight up doing marvel and dc characters with with a with no abandon with yeah. no with no respect for but or with, with for potentially someday or like how long do you poke the bear until the bear is going to come after you you know uh, what i mean and now now again yeah. to, i'll tell on myself if you keep scrolling down you're going to see eventually we're into some shikari covers that are clearly not not cosplay yeah 
Right. Like that's and I, I guess, you know, now, if, that's, you know, you were bringing up forward. earlier about the idea of policing ourselves, um, you know, if, if we compare your company to mine, the chances of you or a company of your size, I'll just put it that way, drawing that type of attention that would ruin it for everyone else is probably a lot more likely than a company of my size. So maybe it's you who should be more worried about that line, which it looks like you are, and, and, and I can respect that. And as my own personal IP is is currently being developed right now as well, I'll start moving towards that way too. So it's it's like you know what what. So do you the, the there was there was a very interesting thing that happened to putting this all together. You guys kind of uh, you guys uh, uh, ran into each other in MegaCon. What was the reason for the disagreement? Was this the reason for the disagreement right here? Uh, the the cosplay covers. No, for if, Sean, if I may go first in my sure. side of the story, and and we did we talked for a little about an hour or so, and and had you know kind of come together and meeting of the minds, I guess you could say. Um, it more came from um, kind of being the recipient of um, public opinions that have been posted about my business and the way I choose to do business and and art books aren't real and you know uh -huh. don't buy this for this reason or don't buy that for that reason. Um, and so kind of what I wanted to get out of that and kind of why I asked this podcast too is kind of how, you know, we're all going to disagree on certain things in this business. Every company, every industry has people who do business um, differently than other people. Um, this one seems to be a little bit different than a, a lot of the other industries I have experience in is that there's a lot of public bashing that's not necessary, in my opinion, um, especially from certain people where it's like, OK, how do we come together in our positions to overcome a lot of the toxicity that happens behind the scenes. How do we take this industry as an indie, an indie industry or being a part of it, whatever it is, how do we use our public forums in order to better the industry? And, um, you know, I, I firmly believe that if I have a disagreement with someone or if I don't agree with their business practice, I'm not going to talk trash about them online. Um, and it's just, so that's just a different, business ethic I have, I guess, um, you know, and, and really just try to shoot for some honesty, you know, that, you know, one of the big things is if it's really about the state of the industry and the comic book industry, I wouldn't put a naked woman on a cover. It, that does not help the industry become more mainstream. It keeps us back into this whole area in like the, the art book that I bought off Comics Elite, I didn't realize that it had a naked woman on the inside. It didn't say that anywhere. So I bought something that I wasn't even uh, aware that I was going to get as far as the nudity of a real person. There's a reason why I don't publish um, toplessness or nude women when it's cosplayers, because for one, in a lot of states, that could be illegal if it gets in the hands of an underage person. Sean, are you, you know, are so, you, are you, are you worried about that? Are you worried about somebody getting a book of yours that uh, doesn't want the nudity that's going to all of a sudden get the nudity? No, for the most part, it's, that's, there's a, that was something that Merck did. Uh, it was one, one book that they did, the one that you scrolled at earlier um, out of the, thousands of books we published there was one book they wanted to do a may the fourth uh book hey can we put together um a cover gallery sure go for it can we put naughty covers in there sure go for it the naughty variant should have naughty covers in it somewhere they got lost in translation it didn't happen so mm -hmm. there's if you buy that one cover that's not naughty and it may not say on it um okay you may get a boob on the inside yeah possibly Mm -hmm. I like, this is something I addressed earlier. Um, so you, you kind of made, you alluded to me uh, being unethical, making a post on Facebook about art books in the industry. You, a couple no, things. I didn't say unethical. Oh, I'm sorry. You said something along those lines. I, I said that in my, my personal business, I don't know if I said ethics. Maybe I said that. My personal belief as far as business, if I don't agree with someone uh, as far as how they do business, or their products different than mine, or I don't think their products worthy of people buying it. I don't post it online because it doesn't really. So it's it, not, my my it success just, is not dependent on the 
it wasn't just it's not all about you like it wasn't there's a lot of people out there that are doing that we're trying fair, to do fair fair so but you also and, used a screenshot from a website of a product that was mine so I, let's i did let's i took be, a, i took a screenshot you know, so that I, was i edited the screenshot so nobody could tell exactly what it was and i put it up saying this is not how you do comics well, we know who it was because I got multiple messages from people saying, "Hey, did you see this?" Well, so let me ask you. Let me ask you, Sean. Hidden. Sean, what do you what do you mean by that? This is not how you do comics. What what did that what what does well, that mean? Well, th there were a lot of things to that post. So, you know, um, I think my biggest I I'm, I've never liked the art book thing. It's uh, -huh. uh I get, we'll we'll continue to get more into that for why I don't like it. But uh, the way this person was particularly doing sales was. Um, we're taking pre-orders for a few days and then after the pre-orders are over with, we'll determine the print run once it's over with. My problem with go that, what, oh, go ahead. What? I, I'm, I'm sorry. Finish. I didn't mean to cut you off. So my, my problem with that was the way I structure my variants is I, I sit down and go through the print run of the comic I'm going to publish before it's released. So I'll announce that print run. I may not print all those books. If I say it's going to be limited to 500 and I sell 10, I'm not going to print four 500 copies to sit in the long box somewhere. But I announced that print run beforehand. That print run helps determine how much I'm going to sell that book for, right? N not all covers are created equal. A Shikari cover A trade dress is going to be more desirable, depending on the art, than something I would draw, right? So... You know, collectability, is it desirable? Is it is it is it finite? Is it limited? Right? Why do we chase ratio variants in this industry? Because they're typically the most the most limited print run, usually, right? That's why we chase the ratio variants when it comes to key issues and that kind of stuff. So someone's saying you can pre order this book, it's gonna be fifty bucks for the naughty virgin foil, whatever it's gonna be, but you don't know how many is gonna be printed. But it's 50 bucks to me that's just that's misleading to people because what if somebody decides to order twenty thousand of them well is that book still worth would you have paid 50 bucks for that if you knew 20 thousand of them were going to sell right now on the other side of that what if only one sells hey good for you you got a one of one print book for 50 bucks maybe it's worth more maybe it's not in my opinion Right now, remember, let me back up a second here too. So this is a whole separate side of the industry with, within the comic book industry, right? We're talking about the specialty, highly collectible, limited cover market, which yes. is an entirely different world. Most people that chase key issue ratio variants scoff at the books that I, the, those books that I do. They look down on them. It's a waste of money. It's a bunch of crap. It's all shit, right? Whatever. And a lot of people that buy uh, some of the books, they, they don't give a crap about Ultimate Spider-Man number one. I mean, whatever, right? Like, so it's a whole different side of the industry. And the way this industry has traditionally been conducted is like I just said. You come up with your print run, you set the print run. That's going to help determine the price of that book. The reason you do a trade dress is because the trade dress kind of holds the line and sets the value of how much the other books are going to be worth. Kind of a cascading effect. Trade dress so if a, more. if a much larger publisher came out with that same idea, would you publicly call them out as well? Uh, a much larger publisher, like yeah, like well, like I, I guess my question. Let me like, let me add to that, John. So you're talking. Of, I want to make sure that everybody understands what you're talking about. Uh -huh. So you're not talking about FOC books, and you're no. not talking about crowdfunding books. No. Okay, no, so you're just about... talking about comics that you're <clears throat> self-producing mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with the set uh, distribution and yeah. the crowdfunding world. Yeah, the books that kind of live in the um, the the Lady Death exclusives, limited to a hundred, right? That Brian will put on his website. The Xenoscope limited runs that are limited to a convention or limited to two fifty. The, those kind of books. FOC is a whole different world. There's a reason those books are five bucks because they could there could be twenty thousand of them. I mean, not anymore, sure. but right there so could be. It well, sounds and, like and they want to sell the volume. Yeah, it sounds well, yeah, like they got to sell that volume. And it sounds not, like and it's, 
Go ahead, one sorry. of the, one of the things that uh, that you don't like is the fact that you, do do you do you not like the fact that James um, uh, is is printing more it doesn't have a, a limited print count is that what it is well no i think he does have a limited print count there, there there's a couple of things he does that i think is very good he individually numbers all of his books yes good for you yeah sounds yeah. great that's cool i used to do that and, and even in the case of what we're referring to all those all those books that come out of my hands for retailers or anyone else are all hard numbered whether it's yeah. out of whatever or sequentially everything's hard numbered there's yeah. a number on the front cover. Yeah, and that's fine. Um, you know, but my my previous question about, you know, the this particular case, uh, for one, if it's advertised that this is how it's going to happen, I don't know how that can be construed as misleading, that this is what's going on. If someone chooses to buy it, then they choose to buy it. But there are other much larger companies and publishers that do the same thing where they say, hey, this is on pre-order at this date it will no longer be available and the print run will be the number that's ordered. Um, we've already talked about the one IP coffin comics on their last Valentine's day cover or release did that very same thing a week after your post. So will you go publicly and call out coffin for something that you think shouldn't be done? So if that's how Brian did business all the time, I would, I would, I I would privately talk to him and be like, Hey man, why do you do this? I've had many private talks with Brian. He's a guy. I love talking business with him. I, if there's anyone I look up to in this world, in this industry, it's Brian Polito. That guy. So I'm just, I'm just wondering where, yeah, but where, why, why is that? Why is it always so necessary to try to call out the business well, of other people if uh, other people do it at the same time? And guys, I first of all, let me apologize to everybody. I've been having huge technical issues. I'm down here in uh, uh, Atlanta, and I am. You're great right now. Sketchy Wi-Fi. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, I had to download three apps and do two updates just to be able to get back on. (laughs) Um, But let me just say, guys, and and that's why I wanted to be a part of this uh, discussion, because I I really think that, you know, this is a topic that the industry should talk to. But it's more of the industry should talk to you guys more so. I and, I, and I'm sorry I've missed this entire debate, but I know the gist of it. And it's kind of like street hookers and high-class escorts bitching that they're just doing what the Kardashians are doing, selling pussy for money. And I, I'm sorry to boil it down to that much of a complaint, but... Say that again. like the worst thing you've ever said that I didn't understand. Am, 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 am I the hooker or the Kardashian? <laughs> what, what's going on here? Oh, no, no, no. You're definitely, you're you're the high-class street whore. Oh, okay. Are you the high-class <laughs> escort? And, and James that. is kind of the, 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 the trashy street whore. And you're both talking about we like how to have fun. you're just selling pussy like the Kardashians. And and uh, and we you oh, know I, Sean I talked about that earlier. Saying. I mean, did I come up with the perfect analogy there well, on that one? Brian? It's, it's kind well, of Sean did it with his speeding. <laughs> Sean did it with his speeding I, analogy earlier. So yeah. you know, I think I, I, I think get, it, I get the analogy, and I think I think it, the analogy is right in a sense of and kind of what I pointed out earlier. At, you know, talk to Sean. About I mean, it. I've known Brian. Polito how do we for as an industry? Years. How Jesse do we as an is, industry in our? Um, in our positions, if you will, you you are much higher up in this totem pole than I am. Um, well, it's not about the totem pole. We're all we're all doing no. something. How do we come together in this industry and kind of well, stop we, some of the toxicity that happens, especially online? Well, well I mean, it's not. So, you know, because like that's what, one thing that I've that learned. It's these discussions is what I think. You're right. You're right. It is these that. discussions. But the problem yeah. is, yeah, is absolutely. that absolutely, and that's and that's why I just wanted to come in here and go, guys. I've known Brian for 30 years. No offense to either. I've Sean, we've been Facebook friends for how long? I don't know. Um, and James, I don't know if we've ever met before. Um, but you know, if I, if, I apologize if we have, <laughs> and I forgot, um, none of what you two do is anywhere near what Brian Polito has done. So well, for you guys, and they probably never will. Of well, course, no, not. No, but not with that <laughs> attitude. You won't, but, what that's I'm set out of is, respect. <laughs> that's set out of right. respect. But what I'm saying is, is you can't just keep going back and forth going, well, 
I saw Marvel do this one time. I saw Zenoscope do this one time. I, 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 saw, I don't think that's what we're doing. I saw Kim Kardashian suck a dick yeah. on a videotape. I, I, I then, don't think that's I don't think that's what's happening. I, I kind of don't like. I, I, I honestly do, Sean. I, unfortunately, I honestly do. Just the and I've listened to one half of this conversation, let alone the other the other half. I've been skipped out on. Well, I mean, there's a lot we haven't. I mean, there's there's other things here that we're still getting to as we dive dive deeper in the conversation. Yeah, uh, I, but and, I'm just trying to I'm trying to elevate the base argument that we've been at. I, right I now, think what is, what Dennis is trying to say is that you guys do. I think that when it comes to this style of book, this ultra high, and you kind of you kind of put it, you said it, uh, Sean. This ultra high uh, uh, produce like high quality. A comic book cover that or book art book whatever you call it you guys both do the similar thing and not only in the similar thing where you're creating similar art right on covers and but you're also wanting to be part of this industry i think the problem where it differs where does it does it differ does it mainly differ in and what's on the inside or how they that you guys produce the books what what's the different what's different well, so I wouldn't say that the only the similarity between what we do is there's girls on the cover of a, a comic book and not even that because I don't James doesn't put out comic books um, yet. So <laughs> like uh, that's 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 the difference is that well yeah but but well, yeah, James doesn't thing. call them I mean, comic books either. James oh, sorry, what? James yeah, said he call doesn't call them comic books. books. Well, let well, me, your let, name me is, ask, but let me ask. Let me ask a real your, simple your question. Your website is called Mad Love Comics and Art. No, your like website. My official Mad name Comics is Mad Love Comics com. and Art. Your, yeah, you are okay, a shorter you know URL. So he he does not know and you don't. We get it, Sean. Can we move past this? Well, um, we, we're not, we don't right? know where we're moving past yet, Dennis. Hold like, on. Let, let's like, let, like, let them like, let like, them cook. Let them finish us out. Like like move like. There's a difference. Like. And I, I, I already agreed with the difference, but my official name, and I chose a shorter URL to make it easier for people to remember and type. But if you look at my logo and all my branding, it's Mad Love Comics and Art. I started with the art side first, and I think it's important to look at the intention and why I did that. So, my goal and, and so reason where, where, for what where, I do. Where's the comics on your website? I, I'm actually they're being produced. So you don't sell I, comic books? So your mad love comics and art. You're I'm I'm yeah, I'm, selling I'm, the I'm art not going to open a car dealership. Parts. I'm not going to open a car. Okay, hey, hey, hey one Sean, I'm, I'm Sean, on a car. I, Sean, pause. Is a one panel Ziggy sketch in the Sunday Funnies a comic? Comic strip. Yes. Comic strip. Yeah. No, no, it's not a strip. A strip is multiple comics equaling a strip across the page. You can be a comic with one piece of art. You're getting into semantics. Get okay, onto the and it tells a story, topic. correct? Then piece you, of you, art you, tells you, you a story. Can't... Have you ever seen the picture of an orange circle in the middle of a white paper and five different people say it's an egg, it's the sun, it's a any you... piece of art can tell any story. Any piece of Dennis, comic art Dennis, can be you, a you, comic. You, 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 you're not going to convince me that there's no difference between a book full of images and a sequential story that's told in a 24 page format. There's yes, a is vast the difference, difference between is the, the difference five degrees of difference or a hundred percent a hundred degrees of difference. It's so, so now if you want to get into, well, does, do all these pictures tell a story because the story behind the per person holding the card means that there's a thing you can read into it. There's, we all know what a comic book is. We know okay, what a so comic book is. There's a difference between a comic book, right? A comic book and a book full of 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 giant one page images that are non sequitur that have nothing to do with anything else and we agree on that so and th that's the core of why i don't like the art books now hey again you know my, my my saying i've always said this when i did my youtube shows i said the same thing at the end of every show buy what you like and collect what you want mm -hmm. don't let anybody tell you what to not buy period fair if you like the art books, then buy them. I personally, okay. As, so as, what about as somebody AI who's art, made? Sean? As somebody who's made, gone through the blood, sweat, and tears of 
getting a script, putting together the art, investing the money into it, having it colored, all the stuff edited, everything has to go into producing a comic, right? I, I had a whole, we didn't really get into it, but we published, we published uh, 24 issues through Lunar of, of Miss Meow, Born of Blood and Death Rage. We had through Legends Publishing, we did Carnal Confessions through Sora Sun. We helped a uh, kid's book called The Gloppel. We've done all these things. We've done over 30 Kickstarters and not a single one was less than $50,000 in each one, except for one, except for one was for a comic book. So I'm in this space trying to put together, tell a story in a comic. And then as again, as best I can, right. I I'm, I'll, I'll be the whore on the side of the street telling the Kardashians to not do what Dennis, whatever. <laughs> right. I, I will try to do what uh, the right thing by keeping the differences in the cosplay covers enough to where you can tell this is my character clearly dressed as this other but, but see you're missing you're missing my point sean and you know uh, i enjoy your stuff um I, you know to an extent um i i just think that there's a you're missing the degrees of difference here when you say well his cosplay variants where he dresses his character up as an intellectual property that he, he doesn't, doesn't have a character, Dennis. He doesn't have a character. Okay. okay, but Sean, you're also stealing IP. I, I said cosplay. that in the be I said Hold that on. in the beginning. Hold on, the... let me finish my sentence. Go ahead, sorry. You're you're making a, you're making an a point that you know that you're stealing an IP that you don't own, but since it's a cosplay variant that other people do. I'll go ahead and do it just like that, but I'm doing it better than he is because I have a character that I wrote and he doesn't even have a character. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, I do. And and I just need you to get that in perspective because I, that's I the perspective. I clearly have that perspective. I am attempting to do, to keep it and, within... And here, well, I'm just saying, Sean, for everything that you trash on James for not doing properly, somebody a tier or two above you trashes on you for not doing properly. And somebody, at how do we stop level, the trash talking? Is all I'm it, trying to figure. It's, out. It, it's not about. It's not about. We have conversations like this. It, it's not about right. trash. It's not about trash yeah. talking, right? Yeah. It's you about have been trash talking, though, Sean. Dennis, the the differences are significant, in my opinion. The differences matter. Sometimes those differences could be the difference between a lawsuit and not a lawsuit. You weren't here, but I talked earlier about getting a cease and desist letter for something that we did. It's it's not a fun time. It's yeah. It, so that should be terrifying. the point to realize you might just be as wrong as you're claiming James. Is. Well, that's I, what I, he's saying. I, he I, he did I, say that. He he prefaced yeah. this whole thing. He uh, Jesse just lost connection. Uh, he prefaced this whole he prefaced this whole thing, Dennis, by saying that in the beginning that he plans on you know he's changing his, his the way he's. Uh, doing things it, on the cost. Yeah. Well, then, stuff. great. So let's not it's let's not moving. complain about James anymore, Sean. It's and now let's move on to another topic. Since you're going to not do what James is doing, and you're going to lead by example, then let's move to another topic where we because can it, all get on the same page and not argue about the semantics. Sure. So here, here's a here's a couple other points since. Dennis says we can't talk about this anymore. <laughs> I didn't know. We're, don't worry. Said, don't worry. You're <laughs> good, bro. Let us all. <laughs> so you can keep beating yeah, the keep... dead horse. It, we're we're well, not. We're not. There. There's. You're, you're, there's a few things that add up, Dennis. It's not just stealing IP, right? It's not as simple as that, right? It's Again, you're simple, not. But yeah, go you're, ahead. You're, you're, you're not in this space, bro. You're not operating in this, in this sphere that. Guys like uh, Ryan Kikay, Marat Michaels, um, Mount Olympus Comics, some of these guys that make their own, they, they've made their own properties and they do dabble at Zenithgope and they dabble in the cosplay world, right? There's, there's a line that people will walk up to. Every once in a while, they may step their toe over a little bit. They go a little too far because we're all very cognizant and worried about that cease and desist letter. We're all worried about so, getting in trouble. I think what right? Sean so, is saying, and I, I want to say this real quick, I think what Sean is saying is that he wants to make sure that somebody doesn't get too far out there and put the microscope on all of you guys. Basically, that's kind of what you're getting at, right? 
Yes. That's I mean, yeah, part of it. that, that yeah. would be a valid point. That's if a it big wasn't, part you know, of it. Yeah, and then, I, okay, but doing. here's the thing. You lead by example. Which he's trying to yeah. do. That's what he's saying. No, no, yes, I, I do. that. But it, it goes back to my analogy. Yeah. Well, I think we can, we can, I think, we, I think we all how, get what Dennis, how frustrated saying. would you be? How frustrated would you be if your store holds the line and launches comics when they're supposed to be launched on either Tuesday or Wednesday, and every store around you is just launching them as they're selling them as soon as they get the diamond or lunar shipment in. You would be, you wouldn't just sit there quietly and say, but I'm leading by example. I'm doing well, no, the right but I've thing. I've actually had this, but hold on. Yeah, and so it I've, sucks. I've actually it sucks argument. and you're vocal about it and you speak up when you see and, something and, isn't yeah, right. Yeah. If, all, if anybody speaks up with something isn't right, it's Dennis. Yes, and you're telling exactly. me to just I'm quietly lead exactly by example. I'm going to explain exactly how you do this. I'm going to explain exactly how you do this. Uh, do do? Jesse James and I had a problem with Archie. We made a statement. We allowed the media to cover the statement. We persisted with the publisher. And within a couple days, it was done. And we didn't beat the dead horse. And another situation, a, a comic book publisher was going to make a cover of a kid's book that I thought was inappropriate. And you, you make the comment. And then you make the statement, and then you move on. James, are so, you worried? Are you worried about um, getting hit for IP infringement on any of the properties you do? Am I worried? I wouldn't say I'm. I mean, do I know that it's a potential reality? Yes. You know, and and you know, I think that we've all in this. You know, you know, Sean is. Yeah. You know, a, a recent example I could think of is the Barbie cover. I mean, that one kind of raised a lot of red flags in the industry where a lot of people for one we were like who puts that in front of margot roby right you know but at the same time it was produced by <coughs> comics elite so there's there's things that we've all done that we i would be an idiot to think that i'm untouchable and, and not worry about it i get it um so do i think about it every day no um i think there's a lot of you know part of this is too is is what my intention and in how I entered this whole industry, why I started it and the reasons why I started it and the way that I do my books and why I do my books. Um, it's because I, I believe that in this industry as a collector, the industry needs more artists. There's a lot of great artists out there that work really hard to break into the industry or might not have even thought about being part of the industry or even doing a cover for an art book that's a comic book size that can then go on and work for other agencies. That's my whole goal and purpose. You go know, ahead, Sean. It's like, then go ahead. So what people would do in the past, instead of taking a bunch of their art, like, Hey, uh, let's say Jesse's an artist, right? Hey, Jesse, give me all of you. Give me a whole bunch of art that you've done for free. I'm going to put it in a comic book size book. Make it look like a comic. I'm going to put a trade dress on it and make it look like a comic. And then we're going to sell it as a comic. And we're going to limit it. And I'm going to make a crap I don't sell it as a comic. You don't sell it as a comic. Mad Love Comics has comic and book art. Size books. Look at my logo. Did you my see logo that and my business registration is Mad Love Comics and Art. I can't art. believe Mad she Love. sucks a dick for $50. Dennis, you're, well, that's not what we're talking that's about. That's really what you sound like, Sean. That's not what we're talking about. He's... It's exactly what you sound like. Well, here, here, here's something interesting, Sean. On his books, it does say a Mad Love art book. Yes, it does say that. In the tiniest letters you can possibly imagine, it says... That's because Mad people Love. like not intrusive Sean trade dresses. Sean has decreed that all it, art it, books should be 10-point font. Every, <laughs> a book presented as a comic, in my opinion, should probably be either a comic or very clearly... So the reason I showed that book earlier, the Scotty Young art book, um, okay, is there, there, there's, a, there's a logo on there that says very clearly it's Scotty Young's logo, right? So if you really want to promote an artist, where's that artist's logo to promote them for brand recognition, which you said was so important? You're not promoting. Well, can you pull that up again? Yeah, yeah. Can you pull that, uh, that product up again? Uh-huh. That's the artist's name right there, front and center. That is the artist's right. name. Yes, it is. And inside That's each page is the biogra biography, 
links and where you can find that artist to support them. So yes, it is. Uh, I'll also there. notice on the bottom where your logo is. It doesn't say uh -huh. Mad Love Comics and Art. It just says Mad it Love. It says Mad Love because it's the shortened version and what everyone calls me. It's a different variant of so, which doesn't say comics. So in that argument, it did you see fly. how see through her tube top was? Oh so, my God! So no, but if you if you look at the back cover, I continue it mm -hmm. with. The Mad Love comics and art. So, I mean, are you I, upset I, that he's using Mad Love and that's the name of a Joker Harley story? Is that nope. what the real basis of this is? Uh, if, is I, if, it word word, if it was Dennis, I would have said that a long time ago. Yeah, that's it's the word. Thing. It's what the usage care? of the word comic. If you listen, you would hear why I care. I've said it so many times. Why I care. He's like, worried that so he's times. worried that he's gonna that this is gonna bring eyes upon the whole. Sphere. No, it's the it's whole thing they're being. He feels Rando that they're being positioned as comic best books. Friend yes. The Empire yes. So that heat wouldn't come down on him. Okay. Okay. Lee okay. Williams that, was hated. No, hold on. That years. that's good. That's good. That's Sean said yes. So let's repeat that. James, what what was that again? You 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 feel your opinion is that uh, these things are pe being positioned as comics when they're not comics. Exactly. And I think that's an opinion that you can have, and it's. But exactly. I, I don't think that you're quite, you're, you're, you're focusing on one single word. But that's a out of a whole of brand that's name. A, that's a okay. Big well, I mean, part of but okay. One of the but things I've never one of the sold them as comics. I've never called them comics. If if everybody followed your business model, of get a bunch of free art from an artist. And, and then put it in a comic book size art book and put it in a boarding bag and sell it as if a comic If you ask book. every single artist that I work for that now are working on covers for like World Tree and other bigger retailers, they are very, very appreciative of the work. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they are. So I, <clears throat> let me back up a minute too. So uh, there's like 50 of them. Nathan Zerdy's <laughs> first DC cover was a store exclusive for Comics Elite. Uh, okay. John G. Yang's first store exclusive cover was an exclusive cover for Comics Elite. Well, and the thing is, um, is Carl I Cone want all my artists, DC if you reach out to any artist on my website and say, I want to work with that person, you can find out where I, they are. And I have many, many of them. What I try to do, if I really want to promote an artist, is I would contact uh, Dynamite and be like, hey, can I get this guy approved for a Vampirella or a Red Sonia cover? And I try to get them some exposure that way. Or I will submit tons and tons and tons of their art to uh, whoever's running the variant program at DC at the time. Marvel's impossible to get through. You can't do it. So I, I would talk to DC and try to get them approved for a cover. Or I would reach out to Marat Michaels and say, hey, man, can I put this guy's art on a cover of <laughs> Hardly Thin or Do You Poo or Naughty and Nice? I've done so many Naughty and Nice covers. I put them what? on the cover of a comic book. When there's a the lot of conversations... Of Sean, can I There's, can I ask you a serious question? I would well, hope so. Yes. <laughs> How many people who bought Hardly Thin and Do You Poo? How many people do you think have actually opened up the book to read the story inside? That doesn't matter. No, ah, right. it does because you only hate James because he doesn't have a consistent story inside. Because the bigger because picture here, Dennis, dick for twenty dollars in a car instead of a high class hotel. The the bigger picture that you're missing here is, why not just do but that? Nobody's read a do you poo or hardly thin ever. Uh, uh, there's a ton. So do you poo also has all out poo, Tigum verse. It's spun out into many different things. It's not just the one book. It's become a series of different books, and it's become a giant IP ripoff mill. I get it. Go ahead. Next next. How do you really feel? <laughs> so, so. I, I respect Marat for Pooh, but I'm not going to fucking pretend it's not just a variant cover mill book. Of okay? course it is. So by you pretending that somehow Do You Pooh is some higher form of art than James's art book is ridiculous to me. Why? Well, it's I, ridiculous I think that's that we are thing. wasting time discussing it. What you about nobody opens a do you poo? I guarantee you, there's probably more people who have opened James's art book to flip through the pretty pictures than how many people? How many people do, do you poo? think have read the trade paperback for Death Rage that we that we put out? In I don't even know well, what I the think fuck Death Rage is. Is that your? I guess, exactly. You don't understand our space. I guess. I guess my 
Six my issues point, of that came out. Six issues of Death Race came out through Lunar. It sold over 30,000 copies total. Not a huge number, but all, across all six issues. We have some of the best artists in the world on it. And it, it did phenomenally well. I have three different publishing companies that have many different titles that you clearly, Dennis, have no yes, clue about. And, but and you, you have, have all the opinions in the world. You have, you have all the opinions of the world tonight, bitching that James has an art book and doesn't deserve to be in your space. And I'm you telling have, you, you barely deserve to be in the same space as Lunar. In the same space so as Lunar, what are you talking about? I, I, uh, yeah, I don't understand I don't, what you're talking about. In the same space me, as Lunar, we published me, our books through Lunar. Sean, let me yes. jump in here and just ask you a basic question. So as a retailer, my job is to listen to the customers and sell what they ask for. That's my job. And do I suggest to people books? Absolutely. But my job is to sell people book, books. So if I was to sell a mad love book to a customer, are you fine with that? Well, of course. Hey, I've always said, I'll say this again. Buy what you like, collect what you want. If you like the art books sell them by all means produce them make them i'm here speaking as me talking about how i the reasons i don't like the art book you don't have to agree with me clearly dennis doesn't he has no clue what i do or what we do or anything that we've done but he has all the opinions in the world about it so it's it's true see and here's the problem sean i follow you online you're a fucking lunatic sometimes with this <laughs> <laughs> okay, here, here I'll trigger you. I'll trigger to you. A little one from one lunatic to the other. Let's talk about the yeah. wheelers for a second. If you want to you see Tron, Sean, I don't, really I don't need I'd rather not. Them. This I don't is, give this a is shit about the wheelers. Why would I care about well, them? I don't care about them. I don't I hate the wheelers, too. Yeah, I, 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 I can't stand insane them either. I, AI hunt. You're, you're on I haven't posted about AI in a real comic space person. I'm just telling you, I don't understand your space, your space. Because I think your space is in the exact same space as James, and you're in the exact same space as the Wheelers, and you're barely, you're barely at the heels of Brian Polito, and you nip at him, and you're not at Zenoscope, and you use them as your business model. I do not use Zenoscope as my business model at all. I'm running circles around Zenoscope anymore. You said just like Zenoscope, our our cosplay variants are just like Zenoscopes. Because it, it's, yeah, a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's the most IP. similar. Here's, you said so many things that I would love to address I'm, that you just. Ugh, yeah, let's let, let's let's let Sean let's let Sean address those things before interrupting him, huh? Why don't we do that? <laughs> there. So so look, it's clear you have tons of disdain. It's it's reeking off of you, Dennis. You have so much disdain for what you what, dare that for okay. what I do, like for what me no, and James do. I have do. disdain with you We're, having disdain to James. We're, we're, That's we're, only disdain with you, Sean. But do you Sean? even understand? Do you understand? So if if his business model was the way to go, we would never have uh, a lady death. We would never have so many of the wonderful properties that are around today because people would just make. Dennis, come on, man. Let's give him a chance here. <laughs> you, you, you know what? You don't. You have no. You're like listening level fucking zero, bro. You have no desire to even listen to try to understand. You want to be the loudest person in the room. You want to just, you want to just scream and hoot and holler and talk over anything for any any and not even have a basic understanding of the conversation and why this conversation is important and the reason why is because you don't understand this side of the industry. You, so I'm if, nipping at the heels of Brian Plato. That's an honor. I would love to nip the heels of Brian Plato. He's an inspiration to me in every way, shape, and form. What that man has accomplished is absolutely incredible and impressive. And it's I've hardly anybody will probably ever be able to do that again. And, and I'll be very likely to have a fraction of his success. Right. And how many times has Brian Polito bitched about another comic creator like you have about James? Do a Lady well, Death variant cover without his permission to see what happens. Yeah, that's called IP theft. And that's what you do all the time with your cosplay variants. That's the hey. point of what. Welcome oh! to the conversation, Dennis. Welcome, Dennis. Hey, nice uh, for you to join us. Thanks for if, being if, here, man. Thanks for catching up. You're just as guilty of that. Thanks for catching up. Finally, he said that though early on. Go back Dennis. and rewind. The he said that early on. Missed, like, he man, said like, that early you know, on. And and you're, you keep bringing us backwards and rewinding, like. And 
I like I and I Sean, I think I know where you're going with, you know, if my business model was the way, you know, to go, we wouldn't have Lady Das and this and that. And there's that's valid. But the thing is is it's the business model that works for me and works for my customers and works for the artist I work with. It doesn't make it wrong just because it's not the business model <laughs> that would have given us Lady Death. That's and so to to publicly try to disparage another business because you don't agree with how they do it and don't think that it's the right way to do it. So it's I not necessarily the best way to be okay. I a positive John, are you influence on are you gonna try to speak over and be the last Dennis, you're cutting me Dennis, off. Now. Come on, on, man. Come on. Um that it's if you know, we don't have to agree with how we do business. That's fine, right? Mm -hmm. Is it the business model to grow this industry uh, to get us Lady Desk? No. Is it to is it helpful for new artists who want to break into it? Um, and that's those conversations have happened with many people. There's a lot of conversations that I don't talk about online or never will, and you'll just see it happen. Um, but to disparage another company because you don't agree with them online because you view them as competition, just as to the toxicness of the comic book industry. And my question is, how do we cut back on that and help? Because we're all we're we're all in this indie world, and we're not part of the big two. It's kind of like in in some cases in industries. Hey, they're not going over to these people. That's good enough for us, right? They're not going off to DC and Marvel. They're they're within the indie thing, you know, because. Mm -hmm. How many great artists have we lost in the indie industry to DC and Marvel? You know, and it's like, okay, so like that whole thing is like, we're all in this. And the, the truth of the matter is there's enough of a pie to go around for plenty without being worried about someone else coming along and creating a product that we don't necessarily agree with. I'm not going to cut into your profits. You're not going to cut into my profits. You're not going to, I'm not going to cut into your sales. You're not going to cut mm -hmm. into mine. My success is not dependent on your downfall and your success is not dependent on mine. Mm -hmm. How do we become less toxic online as, and, and what we do? And that comes from a place where I have been sent messages or screenshots of, hey, this and this was said about you or this was said about you because we have, we even have artists who are established now who are punching down a new artist trying to get in and saying, mm -hmm. if you work with so-and-so, you can't work with me. We have other people saying, you know, calling out artists with no um, proof for whatever it is. And this this mm -hmm. industry is someone who's only been doing this. I'm a collector for many, many years. But on this side of the business, I have to be honest, there's a lot of toxic behavior that goes on behind closed doors. We got to correct that. But how do we or can I I'm actually asking, is there a way where like the toxic online stuff? And kind of stop when we're all in this together trying to sell product. That's you do your thing to sell product. I do my thing to sell product. I'm not going to come on and bash your company and say, don't buy his product in the hopes that you'll they'll buy mine. Like, that's just silly to me. And so, and and it also I think it sets it up because you know, sometimes the people who are the loudest people about a topic are and ends up being the ones who get caught doing it, you know, and and I don't know if you want to like get into the whole AI issue, you know, chat GTP. Do you feel that is AI? And, course, you know, yeah. I can go online and say, I think a lot of your emails are written by chat GTP. <laughs> I wish. I mean, just the way they're written, it, you know, but I have no basis for that. So why would I, I go online and say, you know what? I think Sean uses AI to write all his stories. I have no, I <laughs> right. I have no uh, proof of that. So why am I going to go online and say something like that? You know, there's there's just a lot of toxic stuff, and that's so the main so reason I, I asked. I, I for understand this why that post. I understand why that post. So that post specifically that I made about this is not the right way to sell comics, right? First off, I fully aware I'm not the god of comics. I'm not the comic book police. I don't get to dictate. You kind of set yourself up that way and try to be though. I, I get it, problem. right? I also understand yeah. that I do have a voice, and it it can be lent. Uh, I'm still not really, I don't see myself the way other people see me sometimes. I still think I'm just a fucking a dude. And I understand that, uh, you know, I, I have, my voice is a little louder than, than I think it is sometimes. When I made that post, it was, um, 
I have some beef with that retailer you were talking about in particularly. Um, that kind of goes back a little ways. And then combine it with the way he was selling the book and the fact that it was an art book and the fact that it wasn't just you doing these art books. There were many other people at the time. Remember, everybody's looking for a way to make more money, right? So when, when other retailers that I've seen in that space in, our, in, in the, this part of the industry, when they see you do an art book, their first thought is, oh, I don't got to pay the extra cost. Like, this guy charges me X amount of dollars to do an exclusive with him. If I have my own book, I only got to pay the printing cost for it. So I'm going to do an art book too. That way I can make more money and I can still sell it for 15, 30, 40, 50 bucks, pass it off as a comic, and I can still make all this money. They don't have to have the cost or the pain in the ass of making a full-fledged comic book. I can just take a bunch of images, put it in 24 pages and sell it. So with you doing it, you also have to understand, just like I have to understand, that people will follow what we do. Like Dennis so eloquently said, follow leadership by example, right? So when you're doing an art book, other retailers see, oh, hey, they. I have several artists message me. Hey, man, this guy messaged me wanting to do one of my art books. What do you think about that? And I'm like, what? What do they want to do? Well, they want to take a whole bunch of my covers and some other images and put it together, and then they want to do my art book for me. Well, what do you get out of it? I don't know. I don't get a cut of every single book that's sold. I just They just promote my book. Well, do you need that? Like, Do you want this out there? It's, it's, just, it's a weird side of things that right. – you know so then okay so this guy's doing it and this guy's doing it and this guy's doing it and it's already bad enough let's take it to the extreme i don't remember the retailer who it was but i think it might have been epic nation that did that art book and it was just a bunch of spawn covers (laughs) yeah right it looked just the thing well okay here's here's the devil's advocate if 90 percent of your people stopped buying your books your comics and only wanted art books would you change and just make art books so that's a hypothetical if yes or no if the industry started going towards i don't want a comic anymore i want an art book i would have to seriously evaluate that right what what happens if the industry starts wanting nothing but ai covers Right. So we could, what if Are you going to make AI covers? What, well, what we're, I mean, we're heading that way, it seems. You know, that's the, that's I mean, the problem. I mean, you know, we all do our due diligence to try to make sure that we don't have any AI covers. You pointed out that that one on my site is possibly from a guy that did AI in the past. And I will, you have a couple on your website that's AI also. The Lorenzo guy, whatever his name is, um, those are clearly AI covers. Your, your opinion, but I have the videos to back that up. Run it through any hive generator, and it shows up as ninety well, percent hit with AI, and, and that's and that's an AI cover. You can back so a, a progress it. video does not like have you, any bearing you, whatsoever you, on what's AI and what's not. Oh my not. god! No, I well that's a whole other topic. We even got a whole other show for that topic, <laughs> right. <laughs> right? So, um, but the. Uh, you know, hey, Sean, let me start... just jump in for one second. Sure, because sure, sure. Yes, I'm sorry. It's very important that you answer his question. Oh, I'm sorry. And this, his question is, how do you make the industry better in your in your sphere, right? Because as a retailer, I'm listening to this saying, listen, I just got to sell books. You guys mm-hmm. got to hash it out in your end. I've done this for 42 years now. Listen, it's you said this, Sean, during the break. It's ebb and flow. It's a this ebb and flow, and you're pivoting. But how do you, how does your part of the industry communicate to bring it all together? So I would have less of an issue. Again, you, I'm, I keep going back to your website and just scrolling through here. I would have less of an issue with an with an art book if the art book was majority of covers that came from. Uh, a character that you have published on your own comic book, right? Because then it's more of a traditional, like we talked about. Okay, that's you know, I, and, I, and I think I think we all understand that that's your opinion. That's fine. And, and then again, this is my opinion. And again, if it wasn't just blatantly, there, there's no cosplay to any of these covers. That's but that's just, but we're you're you're that's getting back concept. into what's wrong with my company. My question is. And it's based upon your opinion, just like well, my opinions on your company or my well, opinions. The way, the, way forward like, is, the way forward is stop doing that. So, so I mean, what, what the you're best way is, to be the best the best way to create less toxicity 
in this industry is to go to another business say i don't agree with you you need to stop it or else i don't think you should be a part of this that's that's how does that how does that let me the, can i try another analogy uh, no dennis let me finish no um how is that response to the question of what do we do to make the industry better? Not what do I have to do to make you feel better about okay, what I, I create. You. I'm sorry. What I'm do we do as an industry and what can we do in a public forum on a regular basis, not have so much toxicity going around and so, better support the artists and retailers that depend on us. Okay. So basically you're talking about uh, really let's remove Opinion. what we're talking about, the art books and the covers and, and the IP yeah. and all that stuff. Let's, leave all that behind and just talk about how do we be less toxic? How do we push the industry forward and from your guys get over this from your guys' like voice our opinions? How do that'll we never push happen. This industry forward? Well, I'll, I'll step so, in right now and say that'll never happen, especially with yeah, social yeah. media and the internet. It's not going to happen. It's unfortunately, James, but it, it can happen. I'm, it can happen within your small sphere of people. that you. Well, I'll tell you how not. it happens. We have conversations like this. I want everybody to remember that's watching this. We might get heated. We might say, you know, our voices might get higher and lower. But this is a constructive conversation, and my I, channel I has always been the first that. constructive conversation I've heard on this topic in years. Yes. Yeah. 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 So um, it's supporting one another. Like I well, brought up the thing on I, your I, website, I, Sean. I just no, no, I, and, I and like let me let me finish. What I meant by supporting yeah. each other is. Sean, that issue that I brought up off camera beforehand, that is a issue that's talked about behind closed doors. It's not making a post on Facebook going, hey, look, so-and-so did this and, and, and I'm going to call them out for it because they made a mistake. It's having these conversations publicly, but when it's an issue one-on-one, -on -one, it's handled one-on-one. -on -one. There's a okay. lot of stuff so that gets post posted publicly that should be said behind closed doors. I, I have an issue so, with that. So if you... so. Let me let me clarify something here real quick. For those of you who don't follow me on Facebook, good for you. Please don't. <laughs> don't subject anybody to that craziness. Like I I I'm not constantly posting on social media bashing companies and saying how terrible everybody is and everything is and how terrible the industry is and f this guy and f that guy. That's not that's not me. Like I don't I don't do that. I have many 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 conversations offline on phone calls, people forget how to use the phone anymore. I love talking to people on the phone. You can hear in flux in the voice and, and I hate the, the messenger chat thing. Like it's many, many, many conversations, many conversations theorizing about the industry and what's next and what do we do and how, where do we go forward and what's the next thing and how are we good? Not, this is going to sound super corny and cheesy, but how are we good stewards of what we're doing? How do we not F this up for ourselves? Mm. How do we not devalue our own product that we're putting out? Right? How do we make better comics? How do we do I got to put a, it took way too long for me to move from power hour Two to rise of the witch, the next issue it, way too long. I put way too many covers on power. Hour number two, way too many. Don't want to be that guy that just milks that book for a year. Don't want to be that guy. So I'm already identifying, constantly identifying ways to get better, right? Constantly identifying ways to get better. That's why, again, I hate to keep going back to this, but that's why it gets just so frustrating when you see people doing things that I deem as shortcuts, right? Like, hey, give me a bunch of art and I'm just going to publish uh, a bunch of Harley Quinn covers on this, on this art and call it an art book. Like, there's no effort. There's no trying to make an IP. There's no trying to make a comic. There's no trying to make it a cosplay. There's no even well, attempt well, you, to try you say to do trying, the right so. thing. Operative is trying. I've actually like you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. So you're making you're absolutely assumptions. right. You're right. We you're don't know what behind closed doors. You're right. All we know you is know. what we put out there publicly. Like you said right. earlier, that's all we know. All I know is when I look through your website, I see nothing original. No original characters. It's well, there all... are there. Well, I mean, you're missing the first sixty that have been put out. But again, what's my okay. intent in this industry? Like. Why am I doing this? I am showcasing an artist's skill in the hopes that they get picked up by like a comics elite or uh, a Zenoscope or uh, Coffin Comics or Marvel or DC or, or other retailers like uh, Bird City Comics or 616. My goal is to get their art in front of people 
in order for them to get hired. And what better way to do that in, than to use the art that these companies regularly hire people for, like you, you come across, you can see something that I do that, or an artist does for me, that's a Harley Quinn. I really like that. I want to put that on a Harley Quinn book, right? Mm -hmm. That's my goal. And you can go and look at all the links of all the artists. That's that's what I exist for because it doesn't happen a lot. It's very hard for artists to get in. So I think that the intention behind me specifically, granted how you you know the other industry as far as art books and retailers and all that, that's a whole different topic. This was more focused on like me just trying to say, hey, there is some intent behind what I'm doing so I, that I, does I, set it differently. So I got to call bullshit a little bit. Sean, Sean let me oh, ask him a question real fast. <clears throat> Is this yeah, something and then I would you, like to speak after Jesse. It, it, okay. Is this something that you coach? Are you branding to these artists? Or is this your own interpretation of how you see what you're doing? Um, it's I would say that that was the mission statement and on why I started the business. Um, and then also the success stories of artists who are now working for other retailers. It, it seems to be working. So you've coached that to them to show their art. Everything's up front that this is okay. exactly why I do it. And I, I okay. have every conversation that I've reached out to people. This is who I am. This is what I'm doing. This is my goal. I never promise anything. I say, this is why I do it. I feel very strongly about art. I mean, most of the cosplay books that I put out, they're not just the cover. The whole book is that photo shoot, 24 or up to 32 pages of that artists, cosplayer artists showcasing their work. That's all set up front. So if if your goal, uh, I, I'm going to get to a second. This dude. Well, no, but hold on. The, oh, no, good. Uh, good, Dennis. I'm sorry. I, mean, I haven't said anything in a while. I'll go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm just saying, I, I let both of you talk back and forth for quite a bit of time. But I honestly, I just need, we need to move on from this because I think we, I think the chat understands. Chat, give us a one if you understand where Sean's coming from and where James coming. Not if we agree with any of them, but if you understand where they're coming from so we can move on to the next topic with these two. Is there another topic with these two, though? That's the question. Well, there, there's, well the, there's, topic, no. the topic is AI, which is the reason I can't, wanted to talk tonight. Whoa. That's the reason I wanted these two guys to come on because... I've honestly, I've honestly heard a lot of stuff about AI. I lost somebody. No, you're good. Keep going. You're there. Brian, did I lose you? No, no we got you. Oh, okay. You know, I, I thought we were going to talk about the differences between this stuff and then also to talk about AI, which Sean has accused James of using AI, and we've, we've had that addressed here a couple times tonight. But, you know, Jesse and I have had long discussions about what we think of AI, and I thought that's what Jesse and I were supposed to discuss with James and Sean. Uh, hey, I, w I would love to get into some AI stuff. Uh, no problem. There's a couple things that I wanted to, to, to mention that James said, especially there's this some douche in the chat talking about Shikari using AI all the time, Ghost Lotus. He clearly doesn't know what he's talking about. We'll address that in a minute. But um, <clears throat> We don't need to address that at all, actually. Oh, we gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. So, um, so, James, you said that your goal is to promote the art, right? Artists. You're promoting artists. the art and the artist. Artist, artist, um, and art that I like, and I think others will like too. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I guess I'll ask: Would part of that goal be to get that art in front of as many people as possible and in as many hands as fans as possible? Uh, on some level, yes. Okay. Are you going to uh, ask why I limited it to only fifty? Well, I would ask. Why, why then do these extremely limited runs and charge 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars for a cover if the goal is to get the art in front of people? There's so many other things you could do. Like mm -hmm. you could just publish that art as a comic book size mini print in a board and, and bag and, and sell it. You're looking at, you're you looking at, you could, at, oh, you could, you could no, sell no, those. It's a valid you, question. You could sell those for five bucks each still have a 5,000% profit and the arts now in the hands of thousands of people, maybe instead of just a very few, you could publish 11 by 17 prints. You could, uh, there's what so many ways to do it. So, but so I, I, I think you, your real goal is 
is to make money on that. that. Yes, oh, I, I didn't. Work. I've never disagreed with that. But okay, hold so, on, Sean. Well, let me let me respond to what you're saying. Please do, sir. Yes, I could go the route of creating thousands of them. Well, I'm a new startup who's been doing this for 15 months, so my reach is not nearly what someone of your size is. I limit it to 50. Do you know how many pieces of covers that I release that don't sell out? Majority of them. Oh, yeah, Some sure. of them I don't even print because they don't even pre-sell. But what I do, because so you can do volume in one of two ways. Volume in the number of prints for one piece of art or the number of pieces of art that you put out. In 15 months, I've, under, I've done over 200 of these things. Individual pieces of art that I've paid for to put onto a printed art book. So I've done volume. I buy three times as much from an artist and pay them three times as much than if I took the route of publishing it and trying to print a thousand of them or two thousand so, or three thousand. Well, so what I'm saying is if if you don't have to do again, I, I would we're not going to into that now, but I love some of those numbers just sound totally wonky to me. Um, uh, it's again, if <clears throat> if the goal is I, I feel like you're more you're trying to get into you are in the space of the super exclusive limited highly collectible cover comic book covers right the 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 prestige selling market if you whatever you want to call it right mm -hmm. the hyper collectible okay. this is worth 50 bucks because there's only 25 individually numbered of this variant right that's the space you're in but you're trying to justify it by doing an art somebody can make in a comic you justify it by saying i'm a champion of the artist look at me promoting the artist if that was really your goal you would you would sell like i said before one a comic book size mini print and you would sell a sell a bunch of those if, if, if you can publish all those pieces of art that you said you published you could purchase the same amount and you could sell them as as a as mini prints or full size prints or whatever I said, mini prints. No, because be I mean, it's it's the reason why you became a publisher and you talked about this on Brian's show. You saw a way in order for you to do your business and you decided to go that route. You realized that you were paying too much as a retailer, so why don't I go ahead and be able to get my books for a lot cheaper? So it's a decision I made, and and the response from the people who buy from me, like I didn't start off hard numbering everything. But that was through feedback of the people that bought for me. So a lot of the things that I've done have progressed in a way based upon the feedback of the people who support my business. So there's there is that part too. Yes. I do have a lot of entry level things. It allows me to run sales or this and that. But championing the artist, I I guess one aspect of that is giving someone a chance that wouldn't otherwise have it. I mean, that's part of it too. Yeah, and then well, but again, you can give someone a chance by putting them on a Vampirella cover or a Red Sonia cover or selling a mini print of them. And the a couple hey, Sean, of things with this that I, ask, you also have retailers question, doing Sean? exclusives of Let your them art finish book real quick, Dennis. So now, so now you're acting as a publisher. You have a signature option on all your websites where the publisher will sign the book. Like, I I, I don't like publishing signing books of covers that I produced and I I own, added I that because I kept getting asked over and over and over if I would do it and that There's, covers the cost and the time for the COA. I mean, so, I, but you don't need a code unless you don't sign it. Like, well, how are you going to okay. sign a book again? You have nothing to do with the only thing you did with that book was you like you're the public. Like there's when you add all these things up and, and thank you, Dennis, for being, I know you're being very patient. Thanks for getting me all these points. When you add all these up, right? It just adds up to it just stinks to me. It just yeah. it's it's I, it's, I respect your opinion. Else, it's your it's the way if you really stinks. want it, the things you say don't match up to the actions. Right. I think and, and, and I, way, I, re I respect your opinion. I think you found you a know. way to do uh, make a comic without making a comic. Um, you're signing them. You're having retailers do exclusives of it. Um, so now they're promoting your titles and, and these are, and, 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 the and, and I, and I get that that's your opinion. And all I'm saying is, um, I, I get it. I think a lot of the things that you do, I wouldn't agree with. I love, but I'm not going to publicly bash you for it. I hey, mean, that's we're the, talking, what I'm please tell me, give me something, yeah. bro. What do you think? What do you not agree with what I do? Please give me a couple. I, he I, just, he literally gave a five minute thing about you bashing him online. I made one post, Dennis. Okay, but the point was, is he already told you that, Sean? 
And, no, he's, and he then just you're said like, there's well, other things he doesn't that, agree with. Here, I don't, I don't agree you. how, you know, you don't, you, you don't. James, hold on, hold on. Yeah, you're in a No, no, I can me. speak I'm, for myself, Dennis. Hold on. No, but I'm speaking for me. And I would like to speak for me once on the show that Jesse and I co-host. Go ahead. Okay. The entire argument of Sean is I don't like your business model. Your business model makes my business model look good, bad. I don't like you could easily do this if you did I never it. Said and that. you could easily do that. Yes, you said. Can't you just think. do this? I don't think he makes uh, my business model look bad. I never said those words. I don't think yes, that. Yes, you did. I you never said, said if I never said his business model, model makes my business model look bad. He doesn't make me look bad. If anything, I he think said it's, it's not the right it's not the right business model. If if my business model was used by everyone, we wouldn't get things like Lady Death, which I agree with. Yes. Okay, but the point is is then you go right back to, well, you sh can't you just do this differently? We get it. You don't like his business model. You think his business model stinks. Yes. Can we please move forward? Can we, can we move forward to how would both of you get to the next level and what would your next level be? Because I think both of your levels are bottom feeder in your space. And I would like to see you both get to a higher level where Jesse and I could even give a shit about what you do. Uh, how many more ways can you insult insult us what we do? I don't well, the show's, really the show's not I'll over yet. The amount of times that you've insulted James, and I'll times that by two, and that's I, how I, many times I will insult you, you Sean. You, you insulted both of us by calling both of us bottom feeders, nipping at the heels of Brian Blue. You've said this so many times. Hey, I want to jump in here real quick, you guys, I'll and I want to come from a collector's, a collector's point of view, right? Not the industry. And one of the reasons why I think that this topic of a quote-unquote art book comes a lot uh, up a lot in, in this community, this speculator YouTube community, is because we hear a lot of the times where there's these guys out there that... Uh, uh, I'll call them, it feels like they're grifting, right? That this is a grift when they create a, 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 a book, right? And, and for a con, they make it look like a, a, an homage to another book or they use an IP to another book. On the inside is just a bunch of garbage. It's not, it's not anything. And then all they do is change the logo for the con, for the next con, and continue selling that art book. Now, I think that's the biggest scab of this art book conversation. I don't think James is doing that. I don't think James is, is grifting in that way at all. Um, but I, I do think that I understand where Sean is coming from in the fact that he, he feels like some, a lot of these things should have some, something to do with a comic if you're going to sell them as a comic. I don't think James is doing that. I think James is selling an art book. I think he's specific to an art book uh, in the comics world right that uh, that's what he's doing he's selling an art book in the comics world because he's using comic characters he's using comic cosplayers he's using comic whatever so th there is a problem with these art books that they are causing issues i just don't think james is doing that and i understand where sean is coming from in the fact that at the same thing that that dennis says we have to kick these these money lenders out of the temple, right? This is our temple. We got to kick the money lenders out of the temple, which basically means we got to kick the people who are do, who are grifting out of our community. I don't think James is grifting. I think that's the the thing. I, I really don't. Um, but I, I again, coming from a collector standpoint, I, I understand where Sean is coming from on this. You keep saying to move to the next point, and I think this is a perfect time to move to the next point, that being Dennis has wanted in, to talk about this AI stuff for a while. And let's go ahead and jump into this AI stuff, because we talked about it backstage when you weren't here, Dennis. There has been some, some uh, new things that have happened in the uh, art world when it comes to AI and AI art. Uh, Detective Comics recently... Um, it came out that uh, Andrea Sorrentino uh, is being called out for using AI art in a recent Detective Comics issue. And here's some of the stuff. So, as you can see, it's very AI art-ish. You could it, there's this darkness. This and I'm not talking about dark as in the color. I'm talking about dark as like this weird evil thing that happens with AI art that you could tell. Um, yeah. So, so this is this has just come out recently. This is a 
huge problem in my opinion if one of the big two publishers are not catching AI art, one, and two, that an artist thinks it's okay to utilize AI art at publishing for these big two. Um, let's, let's talk about this real quick. I want to get your guys' opinion on the detective stuff. Uh, Sean, starting with you, because you're one of the most outspoken people on the AI art issue. What are your thoughts yeah. on, on this? You know, I, I got to say, if DC missed it, I can be a little empathetic because that's almost a full-time job to have somebody screen every piece of art that comes through to see if it's AI or not. So if they missed it, I, I could be forgiving for that. To me, what's more important is how are they going to respond to this? If it's clearly shown to be, it looks that looks like so, so AI. It's insane. Like yeah. First look. Anybody that has any experience looking at AI images, that's clearly AI. Yeah. This. What, this what's going to be important this. is how they respond to this, right? And you know, the art community is going to come after that artist with picks, forks, and torches, and honestly, right, rightly so. Um, you know, there there's so many reasons why AI is is not good, and we all know those arguments. Um, but for DC to miss it, shame on them. But actually, they... I kind of want to talk about the the arguments. I want to hear what the reasons are. Okay, sure. I don't think that's Sean and I disagree on AI, though. No, 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 that's fine. You don't have to disagree no. on it. It's just something that I wanted no, to bring up with agree, you guys. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so, I think I think the discussion about AI is more nuanced than it publicly is right now. As far as and that's um, why tools, we're having this conversation. You know the the tools that are that what makes AI AI art now text to generative art is definitely AI art. But where where is that line as tools like Photoshop become more and more AI based? Where's the line and what 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 tools are okay, what tools aren't, what can be used for posing, you know, versus a photograph like where where as an industry and I don't know the answers to this. I don't but I know that there's more than just uh, you use this tool, so you're automatically an AI artist. Well, you know, it's like you said, Sean, it, it is a full time job and you can miss some of these things and we're all going to make mistakes as far as that. And it's it's easy to forgive other people of those mistakes I, when you know what it's like. But I think that a lot of artists or a lot of people in this discussion is so centered around AI is bad. Well, the thing is, AI is not going anywhere. So at what point does an artist move from using an AI tool for let's say posing and this and that to concept what you know could should it be allowed that if I have a, a mental image in my mind and, and I'm not an artist and I'm not you know I don't pretend to be an artist can I use AI to save an artist a lot of time to give him an example of what I'm looking for if it was found out that that artist used that example not to trace or color over or anything like that but if it was found out that I supplied an AI image that then a, let's say, a, uh, a Jamie Tyndall drew based upon that, would that automatically be labeled AI? And I think right now that, that those distinctions haven't been made yet. And I think that eventually those distinctions need to be made. But as far as, you know, Sean's stance on AI and, and the stealing of artists and all that, so I don't disagree with anything he says as far as that goes. Um, the methods yeah. in which it gets called out maybe but as far as your stance today i don't agree with it or disagree with it at all well yeah i agree with everything you said uh, anybody i hear a lot of people try to make an argu argument that says well when photoshop came along those the traditional artists said they weren't real artists and so now this is just the next thing anybody that compares photoshop or digital tools to an uh, a text to text generative ai art is just ignorant of the process of how AI came to be and how it works. It just so shows educate the, us, Sean. It just shows a well, so here's the thing, like I've always said this. If I'm gonna have a very staunch opinion on something and I'm gonna put myself out there and try to have an opinion on it, no matter what it is, religion, politics, AI, whatever, all those polarizing things in the world, right? I'm gonna have a well thought out position that I've thoroughly researched that I understand the topic. And, and, I and you're going to express that, you're going to express that opinion by saying you're ignorant if you don't believe what my opinion on AI is. Well, what which I, is what you just did. 
Well, if that is your opinion, that it's if you're saying you haven't AI, stated what your opinion on AI is, I'm against to say a, that I'm I think against, you're ignorant if you don't agree I'm, I'm with a, my opinion. I'm against. Te- I'm very clear with my position. I'm against text generative AI art in every. Well, and I, and I, I bring up Photoshop because the new Photoshop version has mm-hmm. text to generative in it. it so. You know, uh, artists back in the day, from my understanding, sometimes, you know, backgrounds are, you know, clip art or, or they're pulled mm-hmm. from somewhere else or pull this in and they don't hand draw every single background. So that's that's a practice that's not AI, but now you have a tool that a lot of artists use, traditional to then digitally paint or just all digital artists that, you know, right now you can tell, but photoshop itself no stable diffusion no any of those other ones it's photoshop where you can say put a lake in the background and you got an art and it's going to become a lot harder to tell mm-hmm. it that's is. still AI. you know yeah. so that tool is now built with ai yeah. so my no. my thing is is now is is it going to be assumed or yeah. do we have to assume that everyone who uses photoshop could potentially you be using yeah. AI? well you know so ai is everywhere like it, sometimes i feel like the forest is chopped down and we're standing next to the last tree screaming how the forest is being chopped down. Like everything in our life has AI. The ads we see on Facebook, the half the articles we read, (laughs) half the articles we read online is AI generated. The news feed is AI generated. It's, It's insane how AI has infiltrated our lives without us even knowing it. YouTube's algorithm. Yeah, the alg- any algorithm, everything sure. we do is based on algorithms. Those algorithms, everything you see in your social media feed, every recommendation that you get, it's all AI based, and it's insane. The like I and said, it, and it, here's yeah. the thing. Again, I'm then bringing the retailer point because that's my point to be in here. I've never had someone walk up to me and say, "Is this cover AI? Is the mm-hmm. interiors are AI?" So for a retailer. What, what would what would you suggest a stance would be for a retailer? You're a retailer. Sean. Can I suggest yeah. a chance of coming from not being a retailer really quick? It sounds sure. very obvious to me. If if you as a retailer are okay with AI art, then you, I feel like there's there's a problem where you're kind of spitting on the artists. Right? Well, here's an example. Do you know how many comics have ads in them that are AI generated? So um, you're telling me that we yeah. shouldn't even put in AI ads in a comic because I, that no, I just think that, I just what think I'm, we shouldn't what allow. What I'm trying to explain to you is, oh, we and don't, Jesse, can we I don't just look say through too? our FOCs of 500 books every month and say, oh, this doesn't say AI on AI on it. We're looking and at how many writers, how, to how many comic sell book books. writers, and and how many comic book writers might use AI to rewrite. A turn of phrase. Right. So, right. Sean, my question to you is as, as a retailer, do you tell a customer, no, I can't sell that to you? Well, so really, man, everybody has to have an opinion and take some kind of stance, whether even if it's neutral. You know, you can take the stance of buy what you like, collect what you want. I'm I'm Switzerland on this. Well, they just joined the UN, so you can't say that anymore. Um, you can say mm-hmm. we're neutral on this. Um, if you like it, buy it. If not, so be it. I will order whatever you want me to order. You could take a hard line approach and say, if it's AI, I'm done with it. Right? Anyone that said that, I ch- well, let's, let's see how many people now stop buying Spawn because Todd chose a winner that made that's an AI artist. Right. So how many of these guys are going to. But I I think the separation from you guys right now. And again, I'm just going with 42 years of selling comics. A good portion of comic book buyers walk into the store. They don't know anything about comics. Mm -hmm. They walk in and pull their pull box. They grab their pull box. They walk out. They don't read everything you guys are talking about. They don't get into these discussions. The whole job of a retailer is to provide great comic book therapy to all our customers, not to be divisive, not to listen, if you want to have a stance in the store, great. I don't know how long your store is going to stay open. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I have to look at 500 books a month and I have to say, how do I sell these books? And the probably the last thing I'm looking at is saying, is this AI generated? And, and Sean, I've known you forever. So 
I, I'm just giving you yeah. my point from a retailer. Well, um, Jesse, so that's can what I, I can at. I can I ask you another question though? So what happens if you take a mid stance? Like, look, if somebody or special orders the AI cover, I'll buy it for them. But I will not rack it on my wall and I will not carry it for, you know, for on the shelf or back issues. And the first time the two guys show up for spawn and the one guy has the really badass looking spawn AI cover and the other guy gets the one off the wall and says, hey, where'd you get that? Oh, Jesse special ordered that for me. Jesse, that's the dopest cover I've ever seen. Why didn't you buy more of those for the wall? Oh, because it's AI. He's going to walk right up the road to your competitor who doesn't give two shits about the AI fight. Yeah, that can happen. Buy it from there. Yep. Yeah. That can I, think, I, think, I think it really is going to boil down to the, the, the market. Whoever's buying stuff dictates what gets created. So, if, if tomorrow everyone stopped yeah. buying AI art, it wouldn't be an issue. If everyone stopped buying traditional art or digital art and only wanted AI or – and you no company would continue to create stuff that doesn't sell at all so, so it kind of goes up to you as a retailer working with the publishers and other people that align with you and give you the products that you can sell to your customers because that's what's going to keep you in business and now if i'm totally against ai and sean's totally against ai but all your customers want ai someone's going to have to come along or art that well but looks see, like James, AI or whatever, right? You're, you're well, still you're, not understanding what I'm saying. What you brought up is a customer wanting AI. What I'm trying to say is most customers just want comic books. They don't care. Yeah, they right. don't so care. Not, not AI. Yeah. So if you, I, what, I want you to look at that perspective. You're looking yeah. at your opinion. Do you think they don't care? The com consumer well, so will buy do. I guess the style yeah. of AI is what I meant. That, well, that and, look that AI tends to have. That right. type of style of art. I well, so the analogy that Dennis gave, that can go both ways. You can have the guy that says, why didn't you buy this cover? I want that cover and walk down the street and go buy it for your competitor. You could also have the guy that says, I can't believe you're selling this AI garbage. I'm never going to shop here again. But who says that, Sean? Who says that? So Ask, tell me one instance where you've had a customer walk up I've to had you many. and say, I've had many. I've had a couple of because they know that's, that's, that's your stance. Because, that's because your they know that's your stance. The business. I have, what I'm talking about is a regular customer walking into a comic book store. Do you think customers at comic book stores are then walk up, identify an AI book, and say, I'm not shopping at your no, shop? That's my no. question. So, so there, no. there, the answer is there's people that will care, and there's people that don't care. And there's the majority people, don't. What's well, that percentage? Can I, it, I want to put this the range. In, I, I, I'd say Dennis, the average, what do you think that percentage is, Sean? I, I'd say the average, the average comic book retailer, not so, not online. I'm t I, I understand. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's it's different worlds, bro. It really is because yeah. when when I go live on Facebook, right? We haven't missed we haven't missed a new Comic Tuesday in seven years. When I go live on Facebook, if I was to present an AI cover, uh, all I would have pitchforks and torches, and people would blast me. But and that's they would you, that, because that, you are that, already that, talking about it. That's well, because there's a again, we we live in echo chambers, right? Yeah. So I see um, people that follow me. I see tons of artists. I follow tons of artists. Almost all of them are against AI. I see tons of posts against AI. I've taken a stance against text generative AI. That's what I see. There's other guys out there that right in the middle of, of, the, of the spawn contest, I made a post about it, and I had four, I, well, a ton of people comment on my post. I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm like, how can you not hear about Andrea the spawn? says it best. How in can the you chat? not hear about the spawn contest? My, my I would say, Jesse, uh, you sell what, 3,000 comic books a week, you said? Yeah. Uh, on our live 2000, stream. 2,998 sales yeah, is probably on our all live made stream. With in the store, we sell a little bit. Yeah. No, but I can I can put this in. I want to put this in a perspective, guys. Well, let James finish because I want to. I was, was going to say, of those, let's say if that was 3,000 individual customers, probably two would care. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Dennis, and, and go I, ahead. So I'm not going to change okay, my on, business hold on, model. Hold on, Sean. Hold oh, on. Okay, sorry, I'm Dennis, not going to change my business model until I see a turn of 25, maybe 20% of people saying, hey, is this AI? Let me give you one example. 
I'll give you one example and you guys can finish off with the AI. We complain about Diamond for decades, about damaged books, damaged books, damaged books, damaged books. Do you know when a customer comes into the store, they could care less about Diamond. They don't want to hear the excuse that Diamond screwed up their books. Why they want to know? They want to know if they're going to get their books and how they're going to get their books. So when it comes to the retailer side of it, what we have to do is we have to look at trend. We have to pivot when it's necessary. And Sean is right. There is a point that we might have to pivot. But Sean, what I'm trying to explain to you, you live in that world. You just mm -hmm. said when you read all these Facebook posts, I have just as many friends as you. You know how many AI posts I see? You Sean. and three other people, right? <laughs> because they, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I love your opinions, okay? I, I, I think they're great. Um, and by the way, you've been live streaming for eight years, not seven years. Oh, just sorry. On Facebook. We, we lose count, right? Right. Yeah. I, I got you uh, by what, a day or something like that? <laughs> you beat me by two days. So, um, so at the end of the day, I think when you start talking about opinions, what we want to look at, we want to look at every level of the comic book world, not just one level. Uh, and if you look at all the perceptions and how we sell customers at the end, we're listening to customers in, in, in Sean's case, he knows not to present an AI product because that's his customer base. Uh, the, the final point I want to make that you guys brought up about do you poo. Listen, this guy's done over 1600 covers now, right? So is he going to shop, stop because, well, because someone thinks that they shouldn't be done because there's no story arc in there? No, he's going for 1601. I've done 25 do you poo exclusives and I've sold out within seconds. Great. Awesome. And when I do my next one, I'll do the same. But we have to live in a world of selling comics all the time and taking care of customers and selling them what they ask for. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so Dennis, my, go ahead. I, I My point on the AI, you know, and, and Jesse came up with the one story and then I came up with the one analogy. And then, Sean, you came up with the reverse on that based on yours. But let me just put this into a different context, because I think it's an important an important uh, parallel. Let's just pretend that the entire comic industry all of a sudden unionized. Marvel got unionized, and let's just say it's the Teamsters. Let's because that's the only union I know, or the you know UAW. Um, the Teamsters unionized Marvel and DC, and then the Teamsters go over to Boom, and they they unionize Boom, and they go over to. To dynamite and they unionize dynamite and let's say they get all the way down to sean and james and everyone in the everyone in the comic industry is unionized except for image they incorporated it in a different state that has a right to work law and let's just say i think union is a pretty uh, fervent customer base that you can't really ignore as a retailer would Jesse, would you not order Image Comics if you had 20 or 30 percent of your customer base say, I will only buy Union Comics and I will only shop from a comic store that supports Union Comics? No, I mean, no, I mean, I mean, take care of all my customers. Exactly. And that's where I think the AI argument, it's a very fervent pro anti AI. That's a double negative or pause double. I don't know. Um, it's a very fervent audience, but no matter how fervent it gets, and if one if one publisher says, "Hey man, uh, we're going to do AI covers for the month of May, and it's going to be AI May, and we're not going to stop carrying comics from a publisher because one fervent little group hates that particular part of it," if they're still producing comics. Right. And that's where I wanted this whole argument to come from, guys. Just because I needed you to understand where retailers are on the AI issue is going to be exactly how we translate down to you, um, Sean, and your argument against James. The argument that a lot of this industry is going to have against your fight against AI is literally the exact parallel of your argument against James. It's a micro. Well, but a micro I, I, micro I would cosmos. say, Dennis, on this part, though, Sean is entitled to his opinion. 
and we need Absolutely. to support that as well. So I didn't well, say I, I think don't I, support well, his it, opinion. I'm just I have to have him understand that when his opinion is so negative against James, that his that same. We don't have to get Dennis. Dennis, AI. I appreciate. I appreciate. James, don't quit interrupting me because then I'm going to not like you. Okay? <laughs> Just let me finish my sentence. I'm defending you. No one, you're getting my defense because it's free. I need Sean to understand that there's people who are going to look down on his stance at AI, and that same differential is the differential between why some of us aren't supporting your hatred against James. Go ahead, James. I would say as far as the AI, Sean and myself and, and the retailer position is very different than the publisher and or creator position. The AI thing is such an issue because our industry is built on the back of artists. Here is a system or a program or here's other people who are now capitalizing that hard work that these artists have put in to their craft and capitalizing on it. We as publishers or, or retailers, or, you know, not necessarily retailers, but once you get to a certain level, this industry is built on the back of hardworking artists that you can't get away from. Now there can be a publisher that comes along and is like, I'm only going to do AI. Well, as far as they will never be welcomed in the artist community. Right, because they're just building well, off the back James, of these let artists. Let me ask you this: You just said you've done this for fifteen months. Yep. Okay, so you're basing everything, Sean. How long have you been doing this? Uh, publishing three years, selling comics about eight, nine years. Okay, I, so I've, I've been selling and creating this stuff, but I've been in the art world and collector. For so many years. when you say nobody in the comic book industry in your profession would support this. How are you coming up with this with only doing this 15 months? Of all the artists that I've talked to or have had discussions with as far and as, as well as um, well artists. Um, Cause I think that that's you the ones have where discussed with that. I have discussed it with. Right. Yes from my experience in the last 15 months and yeah. all of the people that I talk to on a regular <laughs> basis would not welcome, be very welcoming to a business that's built on AI only. Okay. From my experience, I have not talked to every artist in the world. That so was correct. said a little bit better there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so. When, when you come out with a stance that no one will, right. Uh, there are a lot of publishers I can tell you right now are, going to right because they have they don't right. have the customer base you guys well, that's have. that's publishers i was speaking of of, of oh, hard creators. working artists you yeah, know. hard working artists yeah they're <coughs> i mean you can go through history and see changes my best thing on ai was i was talking about and this is what dennis was talking about is we started ice cream by going to the farm going to the cow getting the milk to create the ice cream then all of a sudden baskin robbins opened up I don't have to go to the farm. Why would I go to the farm? I got Baskin Robbins. Right now in my store, I got an ice cream machine that makes the ice cream for you. You press chocolate. You want sprinkles on it? Boom. It puts sprinkles on it. Do I go back to my customers and bring a cow back in? Because one or two customers say, well, I really like it the traditional way. No, it's all about pivoting and understanding your customer base. And, and my point is understanding your customer base. Sean and James, you have your customer base. Yeah, you have a specific that's customer what base. you are doing. And mm -hmm. you're pivoting yeah. through that times. So we, I, what, we how I, and let me finish this, James, just real fast. Sorry. And you can talk about The way I perceive Sean with, with James is, Sean has worked very hard to build a very respectful publisher. I have known Sean since the beginning when he was sending me pictures from this, <laughs> hey, I just got this warehouse. I'm like, why are you sending me pictures of your warehouse, dude? You know? shit old, dude. Um, and so when you work hard and you get to a point and you see someone fresh come in, you're 15 months, <coughs> and he sees what you're doing versus the sweat and tears 
and you both have sweat and tears, but Sean has sweat and tears from this long equated time in the industry. He knows what's been going on in the back doors of this industry for a long time. And so I think you have to take some of the stuff that he says as as blood and sweat and hard work and tears with his opinion. And James, you're 15 months, you're brand new, and this is the way you designed it because you don't, you haven't gone through the route uh, Sean has. And so that's the differences I see between you two. I don't think there's this, oh my gosh, uh, if James sells one book, that's one less book Sean's going to sell. I don't think we have that here. Uh, I just think we have a difference of opinions that you both are then grow and be continue to grow your business. Yeah, well said. I agree with that. Well said. Huh? I yeah. agree. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I think the, you know, our stance or how we, you know, my position um, is how I conduct myself and the stuff that I create how is it going to respect that the people who work for me or do work for me will take it? If I were to come out with a cover tomorrow that was an AI cover, I'd know full well that the the handful of people that I've worked with would feel very disrespected by that. So that's what I mean by there's that balance between, yeah, you know, sure. and if, how do if you no guys... one wants to buy what I produce, then I, you know, I can't hire artists when, I am not selling can, any books. Can I so that's ask reality. James a question, actually? Yeah. James, if you, let's just say a new guy showed up tomorrow and he decides he's going to do an AI art book. Uh -huh. What do you think you would do to protest that? I wouldn't. I mean, it's not like. If if so, if I'm having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone, I might voice my opinions with within the group of people that I respect. I would never buy from him. I would I wouldn't believe that other people should listen to you know. I wouldn't take the stance of like trying to come out because because the market is going to dictate whether that person survives or not, right? And the thing is, is the benefit of working with real artists is I have a vision or visions for what I want to create. An AI artist at this point is unable to make that happen or a reality. I have changes. I have specific lingerie versions I want. I have specific poses. I have changes. That stuff's not going to work with an AI artist and the art's never going to be at the same level that we create. So that's, so they're not a, in competition to me, but I, I do know that there's a market for it and there will be a market for it and it will continue to grow. It's not a business I'm going to get into, but more power to them. I'm not going to necessarily, you know, I'm not going to, promote them but i'm also not going to disparage them either i mean there's it's, reasons it's, it's why, his business not mine i mean there's reasons why conventions say no they ask you when you apply are you a do you use ai art and they won't let you in for now there, there's a reason why look at what happened with uh anna zuo if you don't follow her she called out a convention for uh having ai art and they went high to the right and lost their crap on her and she came out on top and you know, good for her for calling him out for that. So it's, just, you know, there's but a for now. Problem. That may well, change. Well, for now, it may it may change. You never know. 100%. You never know what's going to happen. Um, but let me add, let is, me just throw something in there, Sean. Sure. So 11 by 17 picture of Wolverine on someone's table. You're okay with that, though? Uh, well, I mean, yes. And why are you okay with that? If they created that... And they're selling it as I'm this is my art that I made, and I as the artist am selling it, I don't see a problem with that. The kind of industry we've always said this too. If you know anyone uh I remember way back in the day going being at a con and all of a sudden you see artists kind of in a panic. And you're like, What's happening? What's going on? And they're like, Oh, I heard somebody from Marvel's walking around and they're ripping all yeah. their Marvel prints down and they're scared out of their mind because they're afraid they're going to get the that reality is, is it's almost like a, like an unspoken type of thing where look, we know you're going to sell pictures of Wolverine, but when you get into merchandising, putting it on a t-shirt, putting it on a coffee cup, 
well, that's my art. I own the art, blah, blah, blah. Well, okay, but now you're into merchandising. You don't have a license. And people so pay if, a lot of money for those licenses. So if, if you walked by someone's table and they had your Death Rage characters on there, would you say anything? Fuck yeah, I would. <laughs> no. All right. There Absolutely you go. I would. Okay. I mean, what, if, what, the if, thing if, is... Oh, yeah, because I'm, I'm, you know, in, in a way, again, we're getting in a whole another rabbit hole too because like, well, how are they... If they talk to me, hey, I own Death Rage. I see you got a Death Rage print. Talk to me about this. Are you just a oh, fan you know what? How about of the just character? Talk to Marvel about your Wolverine. Yeah, like, are are you are you a fan? Do you just really like the property? Like, what are you doing with this thing? Like, depending. I might, so it's, after it's, the conversation, so you don't have a set decision. You have a optional right. decision well, on the, how yeah. that person responds to. Yeah, you. how? Do, yeah, like let's. I respect let's that talk more. About this man, you know. Well, there's there's a lot of double standards in the industry too because you talk about you know conventions not allowing AI artists. Well, Marvel gotten a lot of heat because they use AI to make their opening sequence yeah. in one of those shows. Yeah, but they're welcome at every single con. Well, remember, so where, where's like? Well, here's the here's you got to remember. There's they're also two completely separate. It, we Entities. see them as Marvel, Marvel. They're two completely separate industries, businesses. The guys that are making the TV shows are not the guys making the comics, and sadly, they don't talk. Now that DC them. came out with a, a comic that uh, has AI in it, do you think they're no longer going to be welcome at cons? Uh, I have no idea. The, they're again, going to catch we'll a lot see, of heat. That's for sure. We'll see how they right. we'll see how they respond. So right. this this is what what's hard about conventions. Do you know how many programs uh, they use? The programs, the programs they give out. How much AI they use in those programs? Oh, I'm sure. Do you sure know how many AI they use on their web page? I'm sure they have the algorithms they use to right. do email marketing. I'm sure. Hey, again, again, it's, again, it's there's, not there's, really a big deal. I understand your guys's part. Yeah, I was just it's, it's, bring it's the it's the so. it's the so th there's. I haven't said too much about this, but here's a couple of points I'll make about the AI thing, and then we'll move on. So without getting into a big, huge, gigantic debate, the one of the biggest reasons why, like your analogy with the ice cream is fantastic, Jesse, right? Like we don't need 6,000 people to make a car anymore because the machines can do it, right? Hey, got it, right? They took our jobs. The, you lost your job, right? They got them. Sorry, we found a cheaper way to do it. It's capitalism, right? Um, same with the ice cream. Made a machine. Guy made a patent for it. He made a ton of money on it. Now they're selling machines. We don't need the guys to do that anymore, right? Got it. If if that was the case with AI, it may be less controversial. However, the way these programs took art without permission, you millions of images, five million images, I think it was, use those images without permission permission to train their machines right to, to train the algorithms to to do it the way they would encourage people to put in prompts like you can even do a google search the most commonly used prompts let's say i wanted to make an ai image and i put the the prompt of art germ in there and then i come out and i say look at this thing that i made art germ gets no credit he gets no money he gets no, nothing at all everyone thinks i made this art right that's that's where the problem comes in that's just like your different. cosplay variants that's where the difference, it's completely different. That, 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 that's why um, the difference also between somebody who spent years learning the nuances of Photoshop and there's a, try to use Photoshop. Jesus Christ, I can't even open a damn file on that thing. It's not intuitive at all. There's a huge learning curve. And if you don't know how to make art, you can't use Photoshop to make art. You have to have a basis of art knowledge first. I can't just learn how to use a program and then all of a sudden I have it, but with AI, I can just type in some words and all of a sudden I have this, this art that's generated that was trained on stolen art from artists who got no credit and no compensation whatsoever. That's the main, that's in a nutshell, that's the problem and the difference with AI. Now the we, bigger problem is, when well, that, and, and, and actually guys, figure drawing has the greatest comment so far I've seen on this topic. You have to, st until AI and the people who are making this AI start putting down rules regarding this AI. No, no, the next two, the next one down. Well, they've uh, tried. Stop posting your art online and starve them. Well, that's, well, that's not a fair thing to say because some people yeah. live and die by their promotion of their art online. 
We're in a social media age. Yeah, but but the point is, is you're you're going to have to figure out a way around this because it's not going away. Well, that's well, what James well, is saying, and that's what well, I think. Saying. Yeah, I agree. I think one too is is what what we can do is, you know, coming from the business side of things, and and I'm in an artistic field, uh, for my career and my training. Back when GoDaddy came out with the website builder. As a web developer, I felt a little threatened <laughs> because everyone could do it themselves, right? Now, I had a choice to make. I had to become better than a GoDaddy website. And I'm not saying this about artists. This is just my own experience, right? What can we as publishers or retailers or people in this industry, what tools can we give artists? Because all you have, you, they're better than AI. But some people don't have that outlet skill set ability to market themselves in that way artists just a lot of artists just want to sit down and draw right i agree so I agree. what can we do or what tools can we provide or is, is there anything that we can do that can equip an artist or artist or the art community well that's why arts have to be better than AI really. or that's why sell agents reps come into play in the space uh, the, the, the and the last point on that is when somebody makes here here's where ai became very very problematic I know of, I'm not going to say any names right now. Um, I've made posts about it. Scroll back and you'll see them. I know specifically of three specific artists. I knew their art very, very well. I knew what art they were able to produce. I've done covers with them. One of them I worked with very, very closely. I know their art style. All of a sudden, almost overnight, there's a drastic leap in their art and it looks completely different. You ask them, is this AI? What is this? How'd your art style change? Some of their responses were, oh, I got a new colorist. Oh, that's I got a new colorist. Sean, that's basically what happened with this uh, artwork from uh, Sorrentina. Is it says it basically in the in the in the comic, there was multiple panels that looked like their old art, but then all of a sudden you've got this weird like painting style that they don't usually do and. It's it, you know the people that would take kind of hours and hours and hours to produce. Like look at Warren Lowe, right? That guy spends Shikari. They spend 80, 60, 80 hours on a cover digitally but, producing these covers digitally, and then some of these guys they just you type a few buttons. So when it gets I, to, when I just it think we're getting into Sean. Hold on a second though, but I think what you do with ai is very important for your community it's very important for artists it's very important for in general but you're really close to burning witches and not yeah. all of those are you're, witches you're right we've talked about this a lot where and but it, here's the thing you know uh what is it is it stoltzeneski who says let one man uh let what, what, what's the quote what one man go get away with murder if it means 10 guilt or innocent ones would be put in prison or whatever it is we <laughs> put no it's put no. one one innocent man on in prison if it means that 10 guilty one are in there that type of thing yeah, yeah so, it, it means no, you can't just witch hunt basically no, no i agree and we've had many many talks about this and what what no one wants is a world where every artist has to produce work in progress videos of every single step to prove that something is an AI. I mentioned Shikari earlier. He made, he has an entire Facebook group. I encourage everybody to search it and join the group where he's posted multiple, multiple, multiple posts of his progress of how he makes, okay, it adds an extra 10 hours to him making like, oh, maybe not 10, five hours to stopping, taking screenshots, make this, oh, here's what I did here, explaining everything. but. Sometimes he's he's even told me I don't want to do this cover as good as I could because people are going to think it's AI. And I'm like, don't do that, bro. Like you, you know, he designs his own brushes and all this other shit. So some people that operate at a high level, um, I'm sure if people saw uh, Natalie Sanders is another great one. KRS uh, artist does tons of Marvel and DC cover or DC covers for them. Some of these artists are Natalie so did. good, they would think. The, oh, these are all AI. That's AI. That's AI. So sometimes if our cover art is so good, they're instantly, like you said, Dennis, on a witch hunt. Oh, that's AI. That's AI. That's AI. I don't care what anybody says. That's got to be AI. It's like, it doesn't got to be anything, right? So, no, And that's why I wanted to have this conversation tonight, because I literally was seeing 
not just you. There were a lot of people, and you know, in, in the chat, we've had several accusations of AI tonight. And that's really what I wanted to bring this around to. And and guys, I apologize for the attitude I took, but I was doing that. I really needed Sean to understand where I saw him. So we've been Facebook friends for God knows how long. And you see him as a bottom feeder. I get it. And he just. Yeah. I think. <laughs> I think. That, I, I wanted freezes. to. I, oh my gosh! And then he That's freezes. The I want to try to freeze. I want to. I, I want to say the say, quote real quick. Yeah. You looking down on James is a level higher looking down on both of you. It's it's the idea of punching down sucks and we should stop doing it. Essentially, right? Yeah. I think. I think the yes. quote is: "It is yeah. better to let ten criminals go than to jail one innocent, innocent man." Innocent yeah. 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 So, yeah. so I, I I thought very it hard means we about this. Sh he keeps Dennis. You yeah. got a better connection, bro. You yeah, keep yeah. chopping up. Hold on, he's gonna pop back in here and yeah, still be hooting and hollering. Anyway, okay. So, Sean, so, let me tell you something real fast. You brought up <laughs> Natalie Sanders. So, Natalie Sanders technically started in my store oh, about nice. fourteen years ago, doing Doodle Night. You should have her hired sister. her first because she did her first variant with me, Jesse. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, and that was a Natalie's very good a variant for a Big Dog Inc. Right? The school teacher, I think. Uh, anyways, uh, no, I did. Drink or drink and freeze, whatever you're doing. That's what's happening. Uh, yeah. But to see her progress and then see Sean bring her up as someone to look at as an artist, that's what we should be doing. We should mm -hmm. be finding ways to award people for their success. Uh, I would challenge you two to be uh, more promoting these folks, not just on their art, like you were talking about uh, the gentleman using his own paintbrushes. Let people know that. Let people know the culture of your artists as well. Yeah. Coach them on them. Coach them yeah. on how they're a person, how you found them. I think that stuff goes well with people as well. So, yeah, no, I agree. That, that's why he made like that group for just him. I keep going back to him, but he's my best example. Uh, that's why he made that group to show what he does, how he did yeah. it. If you zoom in on the on the art, you'll see tiny, tiny little hairs, body hairs he puts on the girls' faces and on their bodies and sure. tiny, tiny, minute freckles. AI doesn't create that. It doesn't yep. add that to it. Um, so it's just amazing what, what some of these guys can do. It's the talent of our, oh, there's a, there's some stuff right there. So he, okay. uh, he started doing some progress video because he's worried about people calling him out. Like you would think that's AI when you first look at it. Uh, promise you here's another stance right anyone that says that that he does ai stuff i've been so vocally against ai and so has shikari if it ever came out that he was even minutely uh, both our careers would basically be i would be discredited for all the time and he would be blacklisted forever so i'm not going to put any um my basically my entire business in my in my reputation so you're saying he draws those from scratch by hand Absolutely. Not by hand okay. on the computer. Digitally, 100%. Digitally created. with a, with a paintbrush. There's I, no I could, photo bashing, I, nothing like that? No. I could pull up my my Facebook Messenger and show you every work in progress. He recreated that whole face because I hated it when it first started. It was terrible. I was like, this face is not good. That's Just the, the question. Second, that's Just the second the face he did. That's, that's why. So it's to the point where when somebody has mastered his craft this much, it's I tell him, like, bro, have it a compliment that he's uh it's, again but i've, I've seen that, other art where if you look at the fine details of it yeah see i, I keep looking it looks at like, so, so like the, it's photo batch i i keep trying to i gotta remind myself stop looking at the comments but anybody who's saying he's photo bashing ai have you joined his group and have you looked at the work in progress so before you go on a witch hunt like dennis said do your research and have your knowledge educate yourself on his processes before you just start talking shit about somebody like a hundred percent like you need to do that agreed agreed but you the thing is 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 that's something that that process is not always put into play by everyone who is so vocal about other artists there's a lot yeah. of people bringing that up in chat and this is something interesting um there's something yeah, to be said i have i have i have a shikari high-res photo uh file that looks like it's photo bash but have i gone public with that on facebook and like pointed out and did screenshots and zoomed in no because it's not my even that 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 back issue that he shows see the little hairs on her face and the freckles yeah. and the pores 
Yeah. AI doesn't put that on covers. He has a brush that has all that in there. It's insane what he does. Anyway, we so, didn't turn this into a giant defense Shikari fucking thing. But uh, No, no. But what I want to say is that a lot of people keep bringing up in chat and some, something along the lines of the, the, the physical art of drawing, right? And Thoreau brought it up a couple of times. You know, you go to get a sketch from your favorite artist and they don't know how to draw. You know, they don't know how to to, to draw on a piece of paper. Uh, uh, Chad Chad said, you know, comics started 85 years ago again, uh, of, of people drawing, you know, drawing art. The, the specific type of art has been associated with comics for many since the beginning. And I think that specific type of art is still very important to comics. I feel like if I wanted to get stuff that's so realistic, I'm just going to go get a magazine. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've, I've, and I've talked about this many times lately, I find myself f being more drawn to stylized comic art rather than realistic comic art because of that point. Do you guys think that it's, that th this type of, of art is, is going to push more people away because of that? Or I, I, you know, Brian, I think it's people, that's why we, well, both of us, James also, I thought it's coming if I'm wrong here, I don't want to speak for you, but that's why we hire artists that do many different styles of art because people like different styles of things. Yes. You know, 100%. Um, I, I have traditional artists that mail me the art from Brazil that I didn't have to professionally scan and, and recreate because some people like that. Now, I, I have certain art that sells more than others, but everyone likes what they like and that's what they're going to buy. And if I want to sell anything, I got to create what they like. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah, I don't want to go after the, the a specific demographic. I'm just not going to create for that. Now, if it creates a business where I'm not selling anything because 100% of people want that thing that I don't want to produce, then either I shut down or, or I change my ways. But I don't think it's ever going to get to where 100% of artists are no longer desired because and I think James, it's actually going to make their skill valuable is James, your ability to, to draw re by Two hand. retailers who basically told the industry, we don't like what you're doing and we're going to stop going along with it. Uh, show some of the other posts of his previous face there, maybe Brian. To show some of just if anybody cares. Yeah. Um, hey, oh, Brian, I just want to uh, correct you real fast. Uh, the first comic book was drawn 139 years ago. Not there we go. Years Yellow ago. kid. Just so you know. Yep. That was the first. You know, uh, oh, I, yes. I had Marines, grown adult Marines, uh, when I was active duty. Uh, there was a lot of paperwork back in recruiting that before we went all computers had to be handwritten and hand filled out. Yeah. But some of them could not write in cursive. Yeah. So, you know, to the point of, yeah, of course I have tons of original art. I have tons of original art. I love original art. I'm, I love the raw pencils of original art. I will always will hundred percent. Um, but just because somebody can't create something, uh, traditionally doesn't mean they can't create something like this. You know, just because your kid or a kid can't sign his name in cursive or write write in cursive doesn't mean he can't type a beautiful novel on the computer. Right, you know? exactly. And and the great example is Scotty Young, right? Yeah. When Scotty Young first came out, people were like, oh, I don't want kids drawn as, as my superheroes. And now he's one of the, I mean, he does more covers than I think anybody right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Why? Because it's accepted art. He perfected it. Right. And, and that's what he does. So I don't have a, a, a problem with this at all. And, and um, I, I think the people that do complain, they're not going to buy it anyways. So. Right. Yeah. That's absolutely. what it really comes Jesse. down to. Well, I mean, I think we. I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Je I think ahead, this Brian. is super important. Again, I bring it up every time we talk about it, that if you are um, a photorealistic artist that utilizes you know, these type of tools to create it, showing a progress is very important. Now, obviously, if you're not photorealistic and you're, and you're using this and you're doing this type of art, using these tools for this type of art, I'm not going to, I'm not going to ask to see your, your progress, right? Because it's stylized. Well, I know well, but that. it was said no. earlier in this show that progress videos aren't enough sometimes. So like, well, that's, back there, that's what I'm going there, back to. If you take what was said by Sean earlier in the show, these progress videos don't mean jack to someone who has an opinion of how they feel, right? So that's, I'm just trying to bring it so, full circle. Well, to, well if, if like the progress video earlier. exists, the progress video exists before the accusations come out, if you can see the process, this was, these were posted in real time, 
right? Now, of course, you <laughs> can be a conspiracy theory and say, oh, it was all backwards, generated, whatever. That's not whatever, right? It, Just some in honor people, of Red Hood in the chat. And, and, and I'll tell you what, you can run this, run any of these through a uh, hive AI detection, and you will see zero. Uh, but here's zero the problem hit. with that hive AI detection it catches it's most AI of the stuff. AI. It's AI detecting AI, yeah. It doesn't, mean it, doesn't, it doesn't mean it's any worse than what it is. It doesn't so. mean it's also 100% accurate. It, it, well, it, means it, you have, it means you have terminators hunting witches instead of if, you doing it personally. Anybody that uses the hive, I've used it extensively. And I've had I've, I've been in conversations with them. I actually almost uh, got a license to it, but I don't have all that kind of money um, to use it for certain things. There was a website we were going to do. It just didn't come to fruition. It was way too expensive and just not worth it at the end of the day because people are going to believe what they want to believe no matter what what they say. But the way the Hive works, um, it, in a way, it is AI detecting AI, but it's if, it, if there's a hit that comes up uh, above you know, 50 60%, it's, it's been... AI, and it'll even tell you what program it used. So, it so if if a, if a publisher comes out with an AI cover that he wasn't quite aware of, what should he do? Well, he should take appropriate action, like I like we talked about before. So, burn him! You know, burn him at the stake! You mentioned to me that there was possibly a cover that was done by an artist that used the AI. Um, yeah. That cover didn't come up in any of the detection tools I used, but that artist may have used the AI in the past. If, is that okay? Is an artist precluded from continuing to work in the uh, industry I don't, if they play I, around I, with not, AI? Not to me. I don't think that's... Sean no. has decreed that. I, I don't... It was just for a my, question. I can decree whatever I choose for myself, yes, 100%. My opinions are mine and mine alone. Um, <clears throat> for me, no, it's not okay. If somebody uh, blatantly promotes AI and uses AI, but this cover they did is not AI. This one was, but this one's not. I'm not I don't want to use that guy at all. And that cover yeah. you mentioned to me was, was a shared exclusive brought to me by another retailer um if it is in fact ai i will go back and like i said do the right thing take any remaining covers off the website any covers yeah i just want you know destroy I, I just want to know kind of have it on the record on the well on i what, mean you a proper again, yeah, response the, would be. the nathan lorenzo i could take a ton of those covers and they're clearly ai run them through there and they're going to come up with huge hits I think so, Shikari's AI. If I if I I'm I'm saying well, if I come back to you evidence? and say Shikari's I have evidence that this is your AI. proof. I, I, have, I have programmed an AI terminator to hunt down AI and the AI what I'm terminator is, has declared I, I have I have I have tons of but Sean, here's I, what I'm trying to get at. I asked you a question and I said I wanted to have it on record on the best way to respond. Mm -hmm. And in the case that this happens, and you turn it around and said, Well, you use this it's like why you keep going back to that? I just want to know. Okay, you well, said how, how what you would, think well, is the proper I'm response. You, how, would, how would you respond if somebody comes up with a ninety-nine percent hit? Ninety-nine point eight percent. I would actually. I have to take a closer look at it. But if I have progress videos from the artist that was given through me throughout the whole creation of that artwork, just like Shikari does with you, then I would go. You know what? The program's kind of effed up. So I, I, mean, I, sent, you a, I sent you an image, Brian, um, to well, the stake. And start putting kindling at their feet. All right. So this is uh, one of the images that uh, you're you're think you're thinking is AI. Yes, sir. Ninety nine point eight percent. Now, does does Shikari uh, art ever generate um, levels like this? Uh, I've had the biggest I've ever seen was four <laughs> percent or something. So well, let uh, me, I don't have enough time right now to do some research, but I would. Hey, uh, Sean or James, uh, for the layman here, what am I looking at? Uh, so, so if you go to a website, there's a website. Anybody in the chat that wants to know, I actually download the extension right here. for my. This is it. It's it's Hive. I download it. You can download the extension for Chrome and put it in there. I just I went to this guy's web Instagram. I sent you this one too, Brian. I went to his Instagram randomly, picked an image that looked AI, okay. and ran it through and. This Nathan Lorenzo guy. Um, I say a new. So again, one. I. I say okay. a new one, Brian, in there too. Okay. So so I'm confused. So, mm -hmm. if it said one percent, would that still be a stance? No, most most times because the the way it works is without getting too complex, it detects like the pixels, the hues, the tone, the way the AI generates it. It can tell. It, it generates AI generates stuff very very specifically in a very specific way. And what it's is not the warning it, number? What yeah, word does the warning number start? Uh, 
50, 60. Well, warning is, you know, anything above 40, but you're okay. almost a guaranteed hit at 40. I'm sorry, a 50, 60. Anything in the 90s is just, it's it's AI. I mean, okay. now again, no, no system is perfect. Of course, there are flaws, there are misses. But when an artist like this guy, Lorenza, has all over his Instagram, how is it too far to think that that cover is the same thing? I mean, just look at his Instagram. It's full of AI art. I, I, okay. I, 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 I hear what you're saying. I'm saying that I have progress videos of the art that you're calling in the question that are my covers of the process, which is no different than you saying you have progress videos of Shikari's work. Here's so the I'm just saying all I did was ask a question on how someone oh, as you. a publisher or retailer respond in the case of AI. And, and you I turned it, it back into this. You keep digressing well, to this. I, I, I answered it. And then I okay. asked you, how would you respond? Probably the same way you would respond. Okay. So there's some pretty if solid. I firmly believe, if I did the research, like you said, and if I stand by the artist who is a hyper realistic ballpoint award winning artist, okay. and I want to stand by him, then I'm going to do that. And I, I, I respect your opinion on this artist. And you can think I'm crazy if I have an opinion about your artist or not. And that's just the way it is. So so this guy, I mean, this is another one. This whole his whole Instagram. This is one another one of your covers. Getting right back into this, guys. I mean, I'm just saying I just okay. So right. so Sean, uh, uh, Sean Sean had said uh, during this conversation, I got so many notes here, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> that we're in the social arena error it's all social right it's about social marketing all this stuff about social right scroll down to his ballpoint pen art i'll go well, to, I'm, I'm, sure I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pull that up right now so, while jesse is talking so if if we're in the social area era and you've you've complied with it and you use it tremendously what is the ai error and what is that what does that mean that's a great question that's a great question. It uh, we have yet to be it has yet to be seen, really. I mean, we're still we're in the emphases infancy of this. That of, that of cover image up top was done with ballpoint pen. Yeah, here I I ran I ran a ballpoint pen one through. So it's th a, it's point zero three percent the ballpoint it, pen one. By the way, this okay. is that cover right there. This is progress of that cover that rogue cover. One of the videos. Yeah, it's one of the videos. Yeah, it's it's not difficult to uh, so Take here, a video. Here, no, no, there's a couple artists out there that uh, Cedric or something. I can't remember his name. They they they're fantastic artists. There's no doubt of their artistic ability. They have artistic ability. When it comes to the final stage, they'll take their art. And then they run it through an AI generator that gives it that AI. Was well, that an AI, AI, AI right? generator or is that a filter? Because I think that it's it has not to filter. be distinguished it's, between it's, a filter. If they can't create, so th they still ran it through AI. It's not a filter. If I know what you're talking about. If I about. create an artwork by hand, if, like if, a, if, a, if, a, if original he's, art if that, by hand. So here's, if he's that good, don't take the shortcut of running it through AI to give it a very, and they're doing that a to give it a look. look. But, yeah. but the, the idea of Photoshop filters have been around in Photoshop since what, CS2, CS3? So, now so when, is, when is, is, you're talking about text to AI, so now what right, you're text to is, generative images and AI based filters. So now what you're saying is it's okay to use AI as long as you're doing it as a filter. Because that's the same as Photoshop. No, I'm asking, is there a distinction between yes. text, text to AI, yes, a text a generating thing, Okay, so if, if there's a Photoshop filter, because we were buying Photoshop actions 10 years ago to create a specific look at the, the end of a project. Is, the that's, answer is simple. Is that different or no? Yes. yes the so Photoshop is, actions, the even if they're AI-based, are no longer allowed? The answer is this. It's not. If it's AI, Stable Diffusion, any of these other ones that have used stolen art to create their algorithm that doesn't give credit to the artist etc 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 that is not to be used that is the the bane of everything that is wrong with this so again you don't see the complete creation of this cover 
I'm sure he worked on it up to that point. We don't see the complete creation of any of Shikari's covers either. So yeah, uh, well, run Shikari through Hive. That you keep missing. No, no, no. That we're talking about Hive. You're talking about a a, a program that, that, that you're basing your whole AI. thing on. If if that Shikari could AI. do it from scratch, then he should post a for from scratch video. He, All he's uh, showing is a, a square inch on his lips. That's so, it. So so how about a start to finish? Okay, so I've number one. He's not going to do an 80 hour, 60, 40, 60, 80 hour start to finish video. It's not going to happen. If he really wanted to clear his number name two, with everyone, he'd put in number two, show me some evidence that he is AI. Besides, I think it. Show me some evidence. I think there's a magic oh. purple man in the sky and we're all living in his eyeball. So well, here, here's the, here's you're, the you're, thing. You're applying, you're applying your rule tests to everyone else, but not yourself. I, and I, it's not yes. really honest. I, I, no, I have... There's one thing you're missing, though. I can run his stuff through an AI. It doesn't matter. Tool. Photo bashing will not come up as AI. It's not photo bashing. Okay, if you say so. I do say so. Okay. So I, to I, explain I, I, every what everybody what photo bashing is. Let what me, is photo bashing? Yeah, you you amalgamate images that have already been created or have been rendered based on past imi images, right? Yeah, you you photo bash images into one final image. There's that's like how he that Barbie cover became so exactly like Margot Robbie's face. It was photo bashed or or a face app or whatever program is used to create that stuff. Now, Sean, I get it. You don't you, your opinion is I can have my opinion about it and I can make my rules on what it is that you need to do in order to prove that Shikari's not. But I'm not applying those rules to you but you have these set rules and these expectations that everyone else has to live up to that you don't apply to, to yourself all the time what, what which is weird okay so i, I progress admit. videos you said oh. at once that progress videos are can be faked but then when it comes to shikari look at all his progress videos oh he's not going to do a, a start to finish i'm not going to prove it that way it's just you don't apply the same standards to yourself if, this is art somebody, go YouTube. This so is art I will, YouTube. I will say this again. This is so, art YouTube. So Brian, what I'm sending you is I haven't even announced this yet. I shouldn't even do this, but this is a course of the last four days. Um, I haven't made this big announcement yet, but we have a brand new IP that we purchased. This is Shikari's cover for the Kickstarter. His work in progress. I just sent you all these images from what I've gotten so far. Is it a, is it a video of the creation of the face drawn no, by it hand? No, not. I would like to see that. Okay, well, you're not going to. I already told you this. Okay, that's fine. Because then I, well, I'll, then I so think that people will me, be able to say any, that. Does any of this look like photo bashing to you? We're None of this the fucking bad. weeds on this. I really just don't even give a fuck anymore, dude. Well, then go no, ahead. you don't, Dennis. But this is what uh, to everybody else. This is making sense. You just weren't here for this. This is this is important stuff. I don't think people realize what what type of how people are creating. I, we art nowadays all, we were all on the same but here's the thing we we're all on the same page that sean is going on witch hunts and he needs to back down from that a little bit i'm hold not on, gonna sean, witch hunt. hold on hold on and then you spent the last 10 minutes witch hunting jason's artist james or james's artist sorry and 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 we're sitting here and we're going into the weeds on all these specifics we're just trying to get a generalization of Hey, how about we stop witch hunting? AI is here. You go fight your fight, however you want to fight it, but not everyone's going to be behind it. And I'm just trying to understand why we're still looking at the minutia of whether the, the Terminator AI is hunting this Terminator or this witch or that witch. I just... Be, be, because you, you just said it, Dennis. You said fight that fight however you choose to fight it. Brian has given us a platform to have that fight now and talk about it. You don't like it anymore. Sorry, but we're here talking about it. A lot of people are interested in this. This is interesting to a lot of people. Well, I, I'm sorry, out of your was, mind. I thought it was Jesse and the the Jesse and Dennis industry want, show, and we're so uh, in the weeds. Oh, I, I guess. Well, I'm sorry, Brian invited us on to talk about this. You want to talk about AI too? Uh, you want yes. to talk about this? So yes, I wanted to talk about it in generality, not into such. Some now we're too specific for you. That the two the two of you guys are going back and forth about two different artists, and you're not getting to any kind of cohesive argument. I think we're in a great. Uh, yeah, uh, I think me, I think we all understand that argument. Let me give you guys a great, great question. Let me give you guys a solid question. You know, my job is to listen and bring questions to you. 
is the artwork so good that you two just showed? Again, layman, first time seeing these. I don't know any of these artists. I'm not in that world. I just sell books, right? And maybe I should learn a little bit more and be a little bit more educated. But the progress is so good that do you feel, and I'm asking both of you, that new artists or an artist who isn't that good is looking at this and saying, I need to find an advantage here because I can't draw that good. Yeah, that's why a lot of them turn to AI. They'll use it to polish up their work or to color it or to top it off. There's a lot of artists that have done that. Their work will take a huge leap and it looks like nothing they've done before. It looks like it got that AI look to it. You can just tell them the colors and the feel of it. And they're, they're using it to get an advantage, try to keep up per se. And it's taking it's taking shortcuts, really. That's why it, that's what pisses a lot of artists off because they spend years and years and years and years and years mastering their craft, and then you type in some stuff into a computer and say, "Run this through," boom, here's a beautiful piece of work. It's like, well, well and again, again, the problem is that the programs that make these were generated from stolen art in the first place without giving any credit or royalties to the original people who got them. All this went up to the Supreme Court. They had you can't copyright an AI photo. Like I could take any of those images that show up as 100% AI in the 90 percent tile of AI. I could, I could take that and try to use it for whatever I wanted to, and it would be James's burden of proof. I would have evidence saying this detection shows it's AI, and then James would have to, in a court of law, would have to be able to say, no, this is not AI generated. The only part you can copyright is the part that you've altered after the. AI created it. So let's say so, I changed the face. Well, now I can copyright the face part of that, but not the rest of that image. So it's very weird and convoluted. It's all, all this stuff's out there. It's been up and down through the ringer. Sure. I think, I think James, James, that your answer might, um, yes, artists, new and upcoming ones, but I think our, everyone turns to shortcuts or can turn to shortcuts. I do feel, and there's only one instance, and I don't know everyone, but I know someone who does a really good job of proliferating the arts by passing on his experience to someone else, taking on a mentee. Yeah. There's, I don't know a lot of artists that have taken on a mentor mentee in fostering new artists the way that probably we could use more of, mm -hmm. um, just from my own experience. Um, a good example would be uh, Mike DeBalfo and Marissa Pope. Mike has been a mentor and, and she's a mentee and she's come up the way that she has from my, my own experiences, that doesn't really happen much. You don't have, you have artists who get established and then want to shit on other artists who are trying to make a come up more often than <laughs> artists teaching other yeah. artists. How right. to get well, it to the I, mean, I would, I would stuff. state one thing on the mic, Marissa Pope, they live down the street from each other. Right. Yeah, right. So there's a, uh, they do, they have done so many signings at my store. I've done tons of exclusives with them. Um, but so online I think things, when you, you when you talk about a mentor, uh, you want to look at the scope of that person. Is that person a mentor not just for an artist? Is that are they a mentor for the community? Do they inspire? Do they create hope? And are they a gatekeeper for the future? So and don't get me wrong, Mike DeBalfo is a great example. He's one of my good friends. But yeah. I think you also want to look and you want to challenge those people to be better gatekeepers as well. Um, and I think it's very important. So that's a very good uh, uh, example there of someone coaching and helping them grow in this industry. Well, this well, is just not about art. It's not and the, the traditional studios just gone away. Like that's how they yeah. would do the mentoring back in the day was that's sure. how Marat met uh, Rob Leifeld from yeah working for him as a kid and you know like yep. start learning from him those days are just not there anymore and like like james said i mean it sounds that's a great it's a great fairy tale thing where people artists should mentor someone more okay well who's got time to i barely have time to have a i have mentoring conversations with with business owners all day long all the time it's got to be when i'm driving somewhere and i'm on my phone or i'm making boards and bags and i'm on the phone on my bluetooth or something I just don't have time to dedicate to hours and hours of mentoring somebody. Imagine teaching someone how to draw something. That's why they have art classes. Go learn how to draw. Pay someone to teach you. Well, expect someone to do it for free. You know, like whether you guys like it or not, 
what is going on tonight is a form of mentoring because there's a lot of people that are going to watch this and that are going to learn from this um, on what to do, what not to do, all kinds of stuff. That's why we're doing the show. That's why the Industry of Comics show is here. I, I really want to thank these two guys for coming on. This is not going to be the last time that we have Sean and James on. We already know that. It's probably won't it be the last pleasure. time they're. It no. probably won't be the last time that they're on together. So I want to thank these two guys for being here, and uh, I appreciate you guys both were, were great sports, even though it was it was it was kind of touch and go there. I really appreciate you guys coming on. Well, thank no, you. I appreciate, I appreciate, John, having appreciate having you. <laughs> And you know, I just in in closing, I'll just say this, right? Like Dennis, I still love you, man. We'll have a beer together, no problem, man. You're you're a cool dude. And James, man, like I respect your hustle. I respect what you're doing for the artist. I mean, I'd agree with it. I may not like it, but you're giving exposure to people who may not have it. I mean, I agree with your methods, but you're doing something good for the industry. That again, it's just my opinion. Buy what you like, collect what you want. If you like what James is doing. Go buy his stuff from his website. If you don't, then don't. Same with me. You don't. You, right. you don't like my shit. Don't buy it. That's fine. Yeah. You're not buying well, from me anyway. <laughs> I appreciate that. And Sean, th the the truth of the matter is is you know we might not agree, but there's a reason I get your emails. <laughs> I bought from your store. I've collected <laughs> your covers. I have Miss Meow comics that are graded and whatnot. So you know it's it's just really a, a desire to you know have honest conversations, and we don't have to agree. We don't have to disagree or whatever it is. Um, but I think it's it's it doesn't happen often enough. So thank you for saying yes when I asked you back at MegaCon, and thank you Brian for hosting us and Question. Jesse and Dennis. Yeah, Jesse. Uh, so Sean gave kudos to Dennis and James, but didn't say any kudos for me. I'm You're freaking believable, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Well, we don't you need to give know, Jesse man. any more kudos. So, yeah. Sean, James, <laughs> love you guys. Appreciate it. I'll be on the Appreciate touch with it. you uh, after the, Thanks, uh, later guys. on. Talk to you later, guys. Thanks, man. All right. All right. All right. That's it. Dennis. Dennis, you, you're freezing all over the place, man. You picked a, a great week to Dude, go to. No, to here's go the stream yard. I had to download a, the stream yard and it's not playing well it keeps dropping out can you even hear me right now yeah uh, sure yeah we can hear you yep yep you're fine so stream yard kept dropping out and making re-upload to stream yard and i'm like oh god it, it was it was a nightmare it was a nightmare on top of a nightmare on top of an inception <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, uh, I think uh, overall that was a good talk uh, between those two guys. I wanted them to mostly kind of figure out what their what their uh, thing was between them and I, th I think hopefully they've they've gone on the right the right on on the right that's, way. I, that's guys, I apologize. I just there was just so many times where I just thought, okay, Sean's finally getting it. James has got an understanding of what Sean has a problem. All right. Cool, let's move on. And then somebody would be like, oh, hey, yeah, let's bring that topic back up. And I just felt like we kept slipping down into the... And well, then you I, even on the because last comment. because because of your your issues, you kept on dropping out, and you you missed a lot of stuff. I, I think. Listen, right. we had 125 live during that conversation, and uh, that was the the chat was going crazy. That's the type of conversation that we want to yeah. have on the show for sure. So well, I think you gotta take reality. The reality is you have two young publishers uh, trying to create a business and they're trying to make a mark for themselves. Uh, you know, us older guys have been doing this for so long. We have our brands and and we're doing what we have to do, but it's hard work and and if 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 someone has a stance they want to stay with, we have to respect that. Uh, and allow them to grow in the way they want to grow. AI isn't going anywhere. You can't stop it. So what these two guys have to realize is at some point, and it could be 10 years from now, 15 years from now, there will be a pivoting point, and they will make those proper decisions. But I think at the end of the day, this is why I took away from the conversation, is when we take time to talk about one instance and not the community as a whole or the industry as a whole to your business, that's when you get short-sighted. Uh, so these guys just need to continue what they're doing and I think they'll be fine. So. 
Yeah. Well, listen, Sean is already a juggernaut in this space. The short time he's been in here, he's got that that huge printing, uh, the huge printer that he's just probably going nonstop. James has been in only been in this game for fifteen months, a couple of yeah. years. And he's made a l- nice little uh, footprint for himself, and he's talking to the right people, uh, and you know he's 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 out here in the Phoenix era well, and area, and he's dealing with people like Brian Polito and 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 the people here that are you know doing great things and using the same people to do the stuff. So that that's good. I, I think it's all about learning from your peers um, at the same time as you know having these type of conversations. Dennis, go ahead, brother. Absolutely. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And I just, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, no, I think that was absolutely it. And I think you said it, Brian, where you're like, look, he's not going to cost you one sale and you're not going to cost him one sale. Why can't you both kind of just be in that same space doing the different things that you're doing? And I just don't, I just don't think that, you know, everybody's understanding that they're in two different spaces just because one is similar to yours, it doesn't mean it's less valid. Yes. You know, yeah. it just means it's just not less valid to you. And yeah. I think that was the general. That well, was I what think I took away from it when we discussed having this topic in the first place. Yeah, yeah. I also think that um, Sean is uh, Sean is a very opinionated uh, uh, person. And that's that's why we love him. That's why we love you, Dennis, because yeah. you're a very opinionated person, and that's that's an important thing. And it, it works great for content. I hope you guys all enjoyed it that are watching this. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up, uh, hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. L- put comments below and let us know who you want to see on the show next. We've got a lot of great guests coming up and and some ideas. Uh, these two guys right here are working on some great things behind the scenes as well as running multiple businesses. So before we go, I want to ask you how those businesses are working out right now. Jesse, how's everything working on the East Coast with you? You, you you've made so, that jump. You know, I, I don't think we're in a world where I'm on the East Coast or the West Coast. Uh, I'm talking to you guys. I could be in Santa Monica. I could be in Pennsylvania. I could be in Slovakia. I don't think we live in a world where that matters. Uh, I'm a guy that has a store 2,800 miles away, 8,000 square feet, rocking and rolling. But I also have to create business and I have to conduct business accordingly. I also have to make sure that I'm focused on my customer base and what is important to them (coughs) more than anything else. I don't have too many stances on stuff. Uh, Do I want Adisha's and books being bigger instead of use being smaller yes but that's my personal goal there but i think in We're the world blind. of the yeah exactly the the world of the comic book world i don't think there's been any greater time to sell comics if that's what you choose to do we have a lot of people in this industry that have chosen to get sidetracked on what someone else is doing in their store or what this publisher is doing we need to focus on the venues that are in front of us these platforms these multiple multiple platforms that keep on popping up so we can sell one more customer uh you know i i I always tell people uh, and i think i said this last week you know i just hit 130 million views on my google page can't tell you why i just know that i look at stuff in a positive way and when i fell i look at it in a positive way so we're having a good time and i can't wait for a brand to start slinging some uh, tcg baseball cards or football cards on on our shows as well so amen amen i've got yep. uh, i've got some cases to 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 go they're yep. they're waiting to be sold so dennis you you uh talked about earlier that uh, you might be thinking about uh growing maybe, maybe. i mean i might be in Atlanta, define growing uh, to, okay i might be in atlanta <laughs> georgia to uh, just hang out with old friends and meet legendary comic retailers like cliff biggers and just you know uh hang out with comic publishers and and comic geeks and i might also be looking at atlanta georgia area nice hell yeah hell yeah well you guys three hours long was this episode me and the guys here are gonna go talk behind the stage for probably another 45 minutes like like usual but you know what (laughs) 
I love it. I love talking to these two guys. I love creating content with these two guys. I love creating content for all you guys that watch this channel. Thanks for hanging out with us, and uh, we'll see you guys next Tuesday here on the Comic Book Industry Show. Adios.